Compound lifts are generally superior to isolation exercises. Number one, they hit larger amounts of muscle groups or muscle mass. Number two, even for the target muscle, they hit more muscle fibers. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey Sal, all the pros like to do isolation exercises. By the way, that's the voice of the person who would ask such a stupid question. <laughs> Here's why advanced lifters like isolation exercises. Over time, you can train your body to activate more muscle fibers with isolation exercises. Now, when you do compound lifts and you activate more muscles, you tend to do that on your own. Here's a test. Squeeze your hand as hard as you can to keep the rest of your body totally relaxed. Now repeat it, but this time squeeze your whole body. Did you notice you squeezed harder the second time around? That's because the central nervous system is more powerful when it's activated more broadly versus in a more isolated way. So compound lifts, superior, especially if you're beginner or intermediate. As you become more advanced, well, yeah, now you can probably use more isolation exercises. Still uh, really popular in the bodybuilding space. That's why. It's, yeah. the, it's the advanced lifters who say, no, 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 you could build great muscle with these eyes. And they, it's almost as if they forgot how they first started training. That's how I feel too. I'm like, do you not remember how you built that physique? Yeah. And like now, of course, now where you're at the level, you know, and there's another part to that too, is that those, those lifters are training six, seven days a week yeah. for an hour or two hours at a time. Like when I got to that point, um, that's what I was doing too. I was splitting the body parts. I wasn't doing full body. I wasn't in the gym seven days a week, hour at a time, sometimes longer and training, uh, full body routine that's just yeah. way too much it'd be crushed so then you begin to break up body parts you know you start splitting them up in two or three body parts and it gets down to and then eventually down to one because you have such a high level of frequency that you're training at in in the week but th that's just not 90 percent of the population and even the people that want to be bodybuilders or want to identify as a bodybuilder that's still not you yeah, like it. It wasn't even me training to be a bodybuilder. Like I had to train for a couple of years with no misses before yeah. I go. Totally okay, dedicated. Yeah, now yeah, totally dedicated, uh -huh. totally consistent for years, and then it's like okay, now I'm starting to see value and starting to split up the body part. It would be like a, a high school football coach watching the pros and saying, "Oh, these are the plays we're going to do instead of the basic plays we need to focus on." Oh, that's a good point. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, again, it's all about CNS recruitment because let's say I'm working my chest, okay. We can look at the my chest and see how many muscle fibers I'm actually really activating. And the intensity dictates uh, the amount of muscle fibers that I can activate, but also my ability, which I can develop over years of training. For example, Olympic lifters can summon most of the strength that they have the potential for with a lift because they're so advanced. The average person, even if they try their hardest, isn't able to do this. There's, there's governors in the body. Now, you can bypass those governors under extreme emergency situations, which is very rare. That, that's the story of like the mom that lifted the burning car off her kid type of deal. But the average person in the gym isn't gonna be able to do that. And so isolation exercise is just less effective. Now, compound lifts. What about time under tension, yeah, Sal? <laughs> that's the other voice of the yes. person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Sorry, I was waiting for a moment. Yeah. Me and my bodybuilder friends are gonna fight you. <laughs> yeah, I know, for sure. Yeah. You you know, I, yeah, you know what's funny about that? They'll show that faster reps sometimes are more effective. And then the, the argument is that, oh, maybe it's the change of the direction because that small stretch at the end and the, the weight is obviously heavier as you change directions for, you know, a microsecond or whatever. But, you know, really it has to do with how you're able to activate the muscle uh, through the central nervous system. That's like the most important factor. And if I'm working my chest and I'm activating my shoulders, triceps, core, my grip, I, I'm going to activate more muscle fibers in my chest as well versus just sitting there and trying to isolate uh, my chest. It's just the CNS works better or fires harder that way. Now, a, a high-level bodybuilder, they've been training for years and years and years. They can isolate a muscle hmm. and maximally contract it and really activate it. You get the average person to try and do that, especially for hard to isolate muscle groups like the lats or something like that. Um, it's, just, it's just not going to happen. And then there's, the, of course, the convenience factor. Like I could do one exercise, like a squat, and that would take the place of a, a, you know, leg extension, leg curl, hip thrust, abduction, and be more effective than even combining all four. I mean, of those. I feel like this is the like we talked to, uh, you know, was it Chris Chris Ketlin and who else are some friends of ours that have been training for you know 20, 30 years of their yeah. life, and you tend to go on this like <clears throat> if you started right, that is right, you started on like this full body routine, and then you like get into this kind of bodybuilding kick where you split the body part up, and then you end up back again at full body. At least that's been like my kind of similar journey, yeah. right? I think that 
when I was in the gym seven days a week, consistent for that long, it made kind of sense to do that. But I'm at a point in my life now where it's like, I'm not trying to train seven days a week. I'm really not. I'm trying to do what I need to do to stay healthy, fit, strong, and mobile. And so I want the biggest bang for my buck type of movements. Period. Uh, yeah, period. I don't, I, every hour the extra I have to spend in the gym trying to sculpt my physique uh, is a wasted hour like I, that I could be spending with family or on the business, which I love to do. So it's like, what's the least amount of time I can spend in the gym and still have a physique that I, I like and I want and still be strong and still be mobile. And I just, you, you can't do that with all isolation exercises. Yep. It, it requires more time and effort into the gym. And I just, when does, when does that make sense? It only makes sense when you're that dedicated to the gym that that's all you want to do is seven days a week yeah, in the gym. And by the way, this is why um, isometrics, when you're pushing against an immovable object. So there's a type of isometrics. I can't remember the name of it. Maybe Justin. Yielding or no, not yielding was the other one. Um, it'll come. Overcoming. To me. Overcoming. Overcoming. Thank you. So there's a type of isometrics where uh, let's say we'll put a bar, uh, we'll load a bar with a weight that I can't lift no matter what. Okay. And I get under the bar and I attempt to press it like a bench press. And I literally push as hard as I can. That's a type of isometric. That Those type of isometrics have been shown to activate the most muscle fibers over any other type of contraction. Concentric, eccentric, doesn't matter. That type of isometric activates more. Now, why is that? Well, imagine yourself trying to move something that you can't move and putting all your force into it. You are turning the CNS on to its max capacity because your CNS knows what you're trying to do. The weight isn't moving, so it recruits more, recruits more, recruits more, and then you're activating all the muscle fibers. By the way, when you're doing that, uh, like attempt to do that and not activate the rest of your body. Like I said, the, the hand grip test, imagine squeezing something as hard as you could. You naturally will grit your teeth, yeah. squeeze your other hand, squeeze your entire body just to exert more force because you know that naturally you know that that's going to give you the most amount of force versus being totally relaxed and just squeezing my well, hand to me it's uh, i guess i look at it uh obviously from like more of a functional like athletic perspective but um in terms of anchoring your body and, and to to be able to kind of squeeze a muscle and, and do that without anchoring your body and in, in, you know in, into the ground or you know to an object or or whatever it is like you're not going to be able to produce as much force there's it's just no way once you learn that process of like really grounding yourself and and becoming immovable and uh two this is this is one of those things where like anti-rotation and um things that uh, against lateral instability like we we can learn how to kind of ground and 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 fight those forces that are opposing us uh we become more powerful you'd be able to generate more force and it's it, this is a, one of those complicated things it's like hard to describe to people but it, it all starts with that that mentality of like if i could just squeeze one muscle but now if i could like actually like squeeze the rest of my muscles to contribute so that way now i'm driving more force yeah. into that by the way power lifters know this <clears throat> uh so you ever hear a power lifter say use leg drive on a bench press yeah it's like what what the hell do the legs have to do with a bench press the legs literally do nothing on the bench press yet power lifters will say if you if you if you give give good leg drive you'll press more weight what did the legs have to do well, yeah, maybe stabilizing you but what does that have to do with with the press you're activating more CNS. Yeah. You're pressing to the floor and activating your hips and your quads and your hams and your calves so that your It's contributing to your overall strength. So that your over your upper body can generate more force. And then one thing that you were kind of talking about is, of course, this is, I don't even think I need to make this argument. I don't even, I hope nobody's making this argument uh, that having your muscles work in concert together is what they do in the real world. Yeah. So you could train all the individual muscles involved in a deadlift or you could do a deadlift which one is going to make you stronger at lifting things off the floor right even if you had the same isolated muscle strength and development which you wouldn't but let's just say you could now have them work together it would be like having the the all the players on a football uh, team practice by themselves and then throw them in the game now everybody play together terrible it's never going to work that way yeah you have to they have to work together in concert and so th that's the functional aspect of compound lifts, which again, I hope I don't have to make that argument. If you're, if you're a fitness influencer and you're making the argument that isolation exercises are more functional because they develop more muscle or whatever than <laughs> compound lifts, like quit your job, <laughs> go do something else. That's the worst argument of all.
Today's program giveaway is MAPS Split. You can win this program, but you have to enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale this month on some workout programs. MAPS, Bands, and the Hard Gainer Bundle, both 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So sexy when you used sport analogies for stuff. Now. That made sense, didn't it? It, 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 it yeah. did. It did. Yeah, worked out. Yeah. Hey, speaking of sexy, though, can I please? I want to finish the conversation about these princess shoes that Justin's wearing. They're wonderful. Can I see princess? Can you, can you please take them off so I can see? I want to. No, you walked in. I can't take them off, bro. They're, they're fucking. Like, they, look like they're painted, <laughs> they look like they're painted on. Hey, put your foot up in there. Yeah, come so on. I, wanna, I haven't. Can I get a good well, look at these things? Look at that, huh? They're Ooh. okay. So what are they called? They're called Nike. What? I don't I don't know the you name on the box specifically, but it did say racing. That's why you bought them. Yeah, I bought them because it just said fast. Yeah, man. Hey, I, like I'm hey, trying do, to be fast. Do again. do do the foot motion you said they're gonna generate. Look at that, dude. I've never it's seen those quick. before. You know what they remind me of? Are they new? Yeah, I, I've seen I mean, they're kind of they're kind of minimalist, but they give a little bit of a heel lift support. So, and two, it has like decent like lateral stability because if you get running shoes, they're terrible oh, to yeah. train it. Andrew, oh, you yeah. make sure you get those on camera because I want the yeah. audience to see like, how they, fucking they, ugly those they, things they, are. They, they fit you your them? foot like a sock. Okay. All right, you jealous, Mr. Shoe Guy. Hey, the bottom, yeah. hey, the bottom's I, like, a, like a tire tread. Look at that. that. Maybe they are fast. They feel good, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. They do kind of look like those uh, you know what they Ferrari shoes. Can I tell you what they remind me of? Okay, there they are, right there. there they are. Oh, wait, they're unisex. Oh, good. Good, I'm glad. Do you know what they... They still have a couple sizes left. Yeah, there's still a couple sizes left. Hey, 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 oh man, I didn't know hey, that. Mostly, hey, mostly the men's sizes are left. I see. <laughs> Jesus. Why am I attracted to unisex shoes? Because I wear Chucks too, and those are like. Oh, anyways. stop trying to call out my shoes. This is insane. Listen, I've seen these shoes before. You have? It, it, but they look a little different. Doug, look up ninja <clears throat> shoes. <laughs> <laughs> type, type in ninja shoes, bro. Dude, look at the... They are ninja. Look at the ninja shoes. Ninja Tell that. me they don't look the same. Bro. Hey, bro. Sal's so happy right hey, now. Look. This is not him. Oh, they are like ninja oh. shoes. Dude. The only difference is... Shut up. It has like a slit in between the toes. That's that's not accurate. Hey, ninja shoes look like hey. a vagina. Why do they... Oh, that's yeah. for gripping trees and stuff. For climbing stuff. Uh, hey, man. <laughs> Yeah. You wear basketball shoes and you don't even play anymore. So what are we talking about? I still, I still identify as fast. I still identify, I still identify, I identify as fast. Yeah. So that's where I'm going with this. I don't identify as shit. What the hell am I? Hey, you know, that's, that's hilarious, dude. Hey, that's, hey, but listen, but listen, are those unisex, Adam? What? They're not, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I guys were chicks like, rocking those, dude. I don't know. Hey, the shoes that I used to wear, you guys used to make fun of? Remember? Yes. The the, the uh, Sambas? Yeah. yeah. Indoor soccer shoes? Yeah, yeah. You guys used to make fun of? Guess what kids are wearing now? No, Sambas are all. I should have never. No, no Sambas. Not. Yeah, they have always been there. I've always just. That's not what you said when I, I know. Wore I just like fucking with you. That's why. Sambas yeah. are. I have Sambas. I told you for my, my snowboard boots. Sambas are, Sambas are cool. Is it like world? Yeah, yeah, but you yeah, have you to did. like spontaneously juggle a soccer ball. But yeah, you've never, uh, you you know, you've like, never to, played to do soccer. That, so so. Like, it's like, that's why I make fun Wait, hold on a second. You can't do that. You can't wear them. Well, my mind's blown right now. Yeah. You mean when I was wearing them, they weren't actually <laughs> dorky? They were cool? <laughs> yeah, they're all right. Yeah, they were. He was you, just fucking with me. You guys it. lied the whole time? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. 100%. Man. This is terrible. I can't trust anything. Chucks is the safe. Yeah, that's the safe Chucks are the most universal. You know what? I think they're actually the most sold shoes ever i don't think anyone really does. yeah they might even be up you know there. what trips me out jordans about are up there too right but i think chucks are up there. Do you know what yeah. trips me out about chucks i watched the first rocky when i was a kid i can always go back to rocky right anytime i talk about <laughs> it i watched the first rocky we'll talk about star wars next. he wore chucks in his morning run running on pavement early yeah, in the morning remember yeah. he drinks the eggs and he goes for yeah, a yeah, run. yeah yeah so i watched that and i'm like Bro, that's like the universe. That was I'm the like, that was yeah. the original NBA shoe. Bro, Wilt Will Chamberlain was. Yeah, that was the that right? was the yeah. NBA shoe. You ever try to go running in Chucks, bro, on yeah. the street? Oh. Oh. Especially when you're not a oh, runner. Running is no that's fun. A, that, in is Chucks. that the number one sold shoe? Nike Air Jordan One. Yeah, that's the original. Oh wow, Chuck Evolve. Taylor All Stars number two. Number two. Wow. Look at that. J Jays and, okay. and Chuck Taylors. Look at that. Wow. wow. Air Jordans are like there's like four of them. Do you remember the? the you, you guys, you remember the ad to these? Do you guys know the story behind these? Which ones? Those Jordans. Those Jordan ones. I don't. So this is what made these go so viral, okay? 
the NBA only allowed white shoes. Oh, and they didn't they didn't ban they banned these shoes. So, he, so put, they, he paid a fine each time. Yeah, and that was the advertisement. These shoes are are illegal for the yeah, NBA. Too, like that was like the wow, that's smart. Yeah, look yeah. it up, Doug. Like I wish they, there's an ad still for like look for the original Jordan One illegal. Shoes, uh, uh, NBA illegal shoes, something like that. Search. That's got to be the smartest ad. Oh, campaign it was the most brilliant life. ad campaign uh, campaign ever, and it was perfect. They were like, "Oh, this is so great! The wow, NBA yeah. is fining him for wearing these because they're all black, and we're going to say they're they're too hot for the they're NBA. Too effective, and that, that it went. <laughs> Gangles. That is the smartest strategy I ever heard. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, now it's an iconic fashion brand, right? Or fashion wear, right? So, okay, here you go. Here you go. See if you can. Oh, the like censored. See if you can. Is do this it. it here? I yeah, don't. Know. Yeah, do it. See it. Oh, Looks the commercial. Like I yeah. want to see it. Yeah, run it for the guys so the guys can see it. Oh, I don't know if it's a video here. Oh, nice. Uh, I just look looking. Andrew, for are you game. helping uh, oh. Jordan, or Doug over here? <laughs> <laughs> Doug, put the abacus aside and click on the computer. <laughs> I get. I get it. <laughs> Fuck. Somebody feed him I a word of original. I want you guys to see this because it was so iconic. Okay, let me cast. On September 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw them out of the game. <laughs> wow. Fortunately, Banned. the NBA can't stop you from wearing them. Air Jordans from Nike. Uh, Brilliant, right? That's uh, smart. You might want to mute that now, though. That is a smart strategy. So brilliant. Hey, speaking of shoes and funny videos, Justin, that video you sent me last Oh, yesterday? the sandals? Oh, yeah. Can I just tell you right now? <laughs> I woke, I laughed so hard. My wife yelled at me because I almost woke up the kid. <laughs> it was, what was the title of it? It was uh, Chonkla, Chonkla, uh, Chonkla Power Rangers. Rangers. Yeah, Chonkla, Chonkla Rangers. Yeah. Well, the so, audience has, okay, first of all, you've talked about this on the show many times before oh. about your mom used to take her slipper and throw it at you. Oh, like, and she could hear. Like with, like. Precision accuracy. Oh, right? bro. Yeah. She, if she was, if she was on the freaking plane flying to the Death Star, she would have thrown that thing <laughs> right in the tube, killed everybody. Yeah. She was so accurate. Anyway, every ethnic mom. So anytime I had made friends that were ethnic, meaning their parents from other countries, I would talk about my mom would throw a slipper and they'd be like, oh my God, my mom too, right? So, <laughs> so Hispanic moms call it a chancla. Uh -huh. You know, they have, there's different names for it. So in the video, yeah. It has all these ethnic moms, and they hold up their slipper. They're all like, different Chunk names up. for their, <laughs> and yeah. all these different names their for their weapon. It. Yeah, and then they, they unite them like and, Power Rangers. Yeah, and then they throw, and their sons, their are all sons grown are men. like running away, like ah, yeah, and it like so hits good. them. Chup chup, chunkla, chinela, chapal, akupoku. And they're like grown so men, good. like my age. They're all getting yeah, hit so by So good. Oh, that's so, so the best part is he sends that to me. Right? I'm dying of laughter. So I send it to, I have this huge family thread with all my aunts, my mom, my, you know, my cousins, uncles. And I send it over and I'm like, I wonder if my mom's going to get mad. No, not only did they not get mad. This is, they're this, all proud. Bro, this is like a, a source of pride, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I sent it to my family. Listen, I'll read to you guys <laughs> what they wrote. And then my aunt comments. She goes, your mom was the best aim. And then my and then my other aunt replies, um, Paula, that's my aunt's name. Mom would say, "Go wake up your sister," and I would go in carefully because you would reach down and throw your shoe at me. Then my mom starts laughing at her. Then my other aunt goes, "It must run in the family." Then my mom goes, "It's a talent." <laughs> and everybody's like, "Yay!" <laughs> Meanwhile, all the kids are all traumatized. High five! Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you guys laughing? About this? <laughs> do you guys do you still remember you guys, getting hit in the forehead? Oh, dude! I tell you guys how my mom she got my brother at the grocery store because he was he was terrible. <laughs> By the way, my brother. He, he was a, he was a good kid, like loving, happy. We used to call him Joe. We still call him Joker because he's always happy. He's always in a good mood. But he was a terror because I don't know. It was like it was like you put. It was like he never ran out of energy. He was always climbing, doing. You could yeah. not take your eyes off him. Just well, anyway, high boy energy. He had a, he has a son. It's just like him, dude. Just like him to the point where they have to gate every part of the house, but they have to figure out special ways to do it because this kid yeah. at two years old will climb or or dismantle anything. He took his walker, nobody knows how he did this, went up the stairs at their house, don't know how they got through the gate, threw it off the balcony onto the floor where his little brother was, which he missed his little brother. They all freaked out because they didn't know what it was. It was him. So I'm, he's telling the story and my mom's like, 
<laughs> like, that's what you get. <laughs> you got your own. You, you, you got one of your own. But anyway. Yeah. Karma. We were at the grocery store, and my brother was probably, I don't know how old he was, four maybe. And he, he escapes <laughs> somehow because it was my job to corral him. And he starts running down the aisles, and he's just knocking shit off the aisle. <laughs> yeah, he's running. Just smiling. Yeah, and just, ah! yeah, and fast, right? And yeah. my mom's like, get your brother. You know, So I'm trying to chase him, but he's hella fast. He's like, I'm trying, I can't get him. So she takes off her, her slipper, and she, she whips it, psh, hits him, he falls. Ah! <laughs> In the grocery store. <laughs> Another mom yeah. gave my mom a dirty look. Yeah. And my mom gave her a dirty look, and she looked at me. <laughs> I'll say some forget. shit. Yeah. I dare you to say yeah, some shit. I'll throw shit. the other. I got another yeah, shoe on. Yeah, Meanwhile, I'm sure she was just like, <laughs> yeah. just like this quick was locked celebration. And loaded. Yeah. I'll just never forget because he's running, you know, yeah. and it just in the, right in the back of the leg he falls because <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't catch him. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> and they're all laughing yeah, about yeah, it. Chunkla yeah, Rangers. Yeah, so funny. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, speaking of training kids, I just saw a clip of uh, Jocko. Oh, it's a good clip. It was. It was. He's talking about um, training your kids. <laughs> And he's talking, just teaching them, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's talking to two other fathers and, and making the comment about, hey, by six years old, your kid should be making his lunch for school. Yep. And both the dads were like, oh, yeah, what? no, my son can't make his lunch like that. And he goes, oh, so you're letting him suffer then. And they're like, well, well, you're making him dependent. Yeah, yeah. You're making him dependent then. Your kid, maybe six or seven years old, they should be able to make their own lunch for school. What do you think? Six years old? Make my, your own lunch? My boy will not. Can't make it. He's sick. What if know. you trained him? Yeah, I, I could train him for sure. So right now you're just letting him suffer. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it for sure. No, I mean you're letting you're making him come dependent. Yes, that is one way to put it. And so then he goes into like that. Tra I mean, he goes the training starts now. You know, right away. Like by six years old, he should be have figured it out by and doing it on his own. And if you're not, then you're becoming he's becoming dependent on. By the now, way, who do you think has a harder time with that, the dad or the mom? Oh, that's a good question. That's a Justin. good question. Actually. That is a good question because there's certain things that uh, I'm, I'm probably more like that and and katrina's like oh it's it's fine like she likes doing those things right and me reminding i mean example right i wonder if nutrition you're more strict because of your background you know is she more loose or no no katrina's adopted that too she's well yeah i would say she's we're well you guys are both very fitness oriented yeah i yeah i think we're pretty both uh pretty strict about like what because i could see that going either way with a couple right where one guy, one side is like, yeah, no, that's no. unhealthy. Yeah. I would say she does. I, I would, Justin's probably right with that assumption after that. I'm assuming that's what he's alluding to is she is more likely to do things for him longer than what he needs to, to have done. Like, for example, like that was when I look back and I say, if there was a mistake that we made uh, with, with Max so far, it was um, feeding him. So, oh, right. at the, and at that time, I, I was even I was unaware of like the research around how them feeding themselves, how that develops the speech and the half of why speech, their teeth. Their yeah, mouth. my son's my son's delayed on his speech. And it's our fault. Mm -hmm. It's like our fault because and it's our fault because we didn't want to mess. We didn't, and I and, and Katrina did it and I didn't push back. I didn't be like, you got to do that yeah. for these reasons. I was just like, I would tease her and be like, you're going to be cutting my son's steak till he's 18. You keep feeding him like that, right? <laughs> so I used to tease her, yeah. but I really didn't care. I wasn't like, I didn't bring to her like, hey, yeah. if we do this, you know, it's going to slow down his speech. Work. So that's an example of that. So yeah, I'd say, but she's really good on other areas. Like right now he has to get ready for school and she makes him do everything like he has nice. to, I mean, she does pack his lunch. So I guess we could start to, I sent her that video. So like maybe we start to implement some things, but I mean, as far as like getting his shoes and getting his outfit and brushing his teeth, like that's all on his responsibility. So Jessica's too. like, she's so good at this. And because a lot of people are like, well, how do you let your kid pick their food? They're going to eat gummy bears and, you know, candy all day long. No, no, it doesn't work that way. So like, here's, here's what she just started doing, which I think is brilliant. I'm already watching it in action. So we just moved into a new place and this new place in the kitchen, they have this really short fridge in the wall and it's obviously for like wine or something like that, but we don't drink. So Jessica goes, oh, I'm going to put Aurelius's anytime foods in there. So he has anytime foods and sometime foods, anytime <laughs> foods he can eat anytime he wants. Sometime foods, which are like, you know, kind of treats like Cocoa Whip and stuff yeah. like that. That he can't always eat. And he knows that's a sometime food. But in that fridge, she filled it with all of his anytime foods. So it's like apples and Yogurt, berries. Probably. Yeah, all the foods that he can eat whenever he wants. And it's short. So he goes up to it, opens it, and eats whatever he wants. So anytime he's hungry, mom, I'm hungry. Well, go ahead. Go eat when you go in your when you, in the anytime fridge. And he goes, he opens it. And now it's already happened. He goes in there. Whenever he's hungry, he grabs something and he eats it. And so little by little, 
we're going to make that a little more complex. And then he'll go and pick his foods and yeah, do his thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. Because otherwise, because what it does, it trains them to be confident and <clears throat> independent, um, which God, I, I was not good at that with my older kids at all. Because I was raised, my mom, I mean, I told you guys, I didn't wash my clothes or make my bed till I moved out, right? Yeah. Uh, so I, that was a, a huge transition for me, but I could see it, the value in it, like tremendous value. Yeah, yeah. I only bring it up. Cause like I, same thing, like it's, it's been a conversation. That's a constant thing. Cause you know, there's the different love languages. There's different ways that, um, you know, both partners kind of express that. And, you know, with Courtney, it's always been like through food and through, um, also uh, like even like doing driving them to school and like doing all the things and, uh, so that's been a hard one to, to just say that and then just be like, well, just implement this, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> like it's because it's, it's kind of like her, um, way of like showing how much she cares about the kids. And so it's like, it's, it's a little bit of a tricky dance, but it's been better over the years of like, okay, well, this is, you know, intentional because now we have to, you see what this also, the result of this is like, you know, they, they become less, uh, they become more dependent on on some of these things, and then uh, so it's been the kind of appealing back of that, and now we're finally at the point where it's like uh, so ten and thirteen, but like ten, you know, they're they're in there like making their own breakfast on, uh, you know, like scrambling their own eggs, awesome. like making their own bacon and all that stuff. But dude, it was a struggle to get there. Is is my point? Does she see the kid how the kids act differently with you versus her? Does she ever see that? Yeah, yeah, she she, Does she notice fully that? recognizes yeah. that. Yeah, but also too, like it's the same. Uh, they'll go right to her, you know. Yeah. Any time, like uh, there's there's some kind of like injury or uh, something that's like super. I, I don't know. They want like uh, to be Comfort. consoled and comforted. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. so or uh, any kind of scared. Uh, you know, something like that, or like something where they're, they're trying to ask me something specific about like how to overcome something. You'll come to me for that. Yeah. Cause like my little ones, <clears throat> if they're having trouble sleeping, I'll go in and they're more likely to let me leave and fall asleep. If Jessica goes in, it can become a struggle. Mm -hmm. And I think it's cause they know they could pull her back in maybe, or I'm not sure what that is. Yeah. No, that's happened with Katrina and I, for sure. She trained, she trained Max to know that like they'll cuddle cause she get, and she gets that. I don't get that. Right. So like if that's Max, that's right. It's a double edged sword. Huh? Yeah, it is a double edged sword. Right. So like uh, the positive thing is I can go in, lay Max down. He could still be awake and say, okay, I'm leaving, kiss him on the forehead and walk out and he won't get up or anything where Katrina's got to lay there with him to fall asleep. But, but he won't then, cuddle with you. But yeah, but then in the morning, if it's five o'clock in the morning, he comes, cl crawls in the bed. He ain't coming to my side. And even if I, like, there's times where I want to, I'll grab him, you know, pull him over. And like, for like literally two minutes. And then, mm. and then he'll, he'll climb over me and get over to Katrina. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Yeah. Give dad a little bit of love. So there's like, yeah. uh, but you bring up a good point, Justin, because... <clears throat> You know, what a, what a challenging situation if that's like your love language, right? If that's the thing that and you like to try and take that from your wife, like if that's something she loves to do, mm -hmm. like I love doing these things from like that. So that's a fine line, right? Like she loves taking care of him and doing yeah. a lot of these things. It's what fulfills her as a mother. But at the same time, too, you recognize that, okay, there's a, there's this independent side that we want to, to develop in him. We don't want him to be codependent well, on all these things. There's so this other side, too, which is... Yeah. Uh, it's a learning curve. So when you start this process, you're not going to be able to get things done in the house as quickly or easily because you're waiting for your kid to do it and learn yeah. the process and yeah. that stuff. That's why my mom did everything. So as I got older, I'm like, mom, why did you do everything for us? She's like, it was faster. I had to get out of the house. <laughs> it was way faster. If I had you clean up your own mess or do this, we would never have. Well, you, you just yeah. mentioned something that we had to really shift big time in our house when Max came because, <clears throat> so uh, you guys know that I'm like the, I'm more like uh, Jessica, like with organization. Yeah. And like I'm a, I'm a little, I know. This is so funny. I got to tell everybody. I sent a video because I thought it was funny. My wife gets excited about the funniest things. We're moving in a new place. She organized the spice drawer by in alphabetical order. So I sent it, <laughs> I sent it to you guys. Like, look at this stuff yeah. my wife gets excited about. And of course, Adam's like, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love that stuff. I do. So I do like that. So I'm a little bit OCD about that. And um, when it was just Katrina and I, Katrina learned that about me. And so in in result to taking care of me and, and helping me stay that way, she, she would always do the dishes and clean the house and, yeah. and stay up on top of everything like that. Well, when we had Max, just like any other parent probably recognizes when you have a kid, like that's really tough too. And I haven't changed. I'm still just as OCD as I was before having a kid. 
So what ended up happening, it's like, <clears throat> I don't ever, I don't really, I mean, occasionally I'll, I'll do this, but rarely ever do I bathe and put Max down anymore because that's my, the, I've now a lot of that time and she loves to do that. Oh, right? so you clean. I clean everything. Oh. So I do the dish. I do the dishes every single night. I clean the counters. I clean that. I bet room. you it's, it's meditative for you. It actually became that way. So you it was actually, music it was just... funny how that was like a, for a moment in our relationship was this kind of struggle where I would get irritated and I would be so annoyed. Like, God, can't you just pick your, you put your purse there, you do this. And I would get yeah. so frustrated with everything. And, I, and then I thought to myself, you know, she never is begrudgingly putting our son down or, or, or do that. I'm like, well, instead of me sitting on the couch and watching TV or doing something work-wise, like, okay, I need to train myself that she's, that takes her a solid hour plus to do that. I can knock out a lot of cleaning at that time. And so it just became, mm -hmm. and then it became meditative. And then I realized, oh my God, this, what a stupid thing here. Isn't that, that funny? Yeah, yeah. It was, it could yeah. have been a massive thing in our relationship. And then I just finally said, you know what, if I care that much about it, then I just need to adopt just it myself. Take care of it, yeah. yeah. And then I need to, I need to do it when she's taking care of something mm -hmm. that I don't have to deal with whatsoever. And she loves to do that. She loves to get Max ready and bathe them and choose the book and do all. And so it's like, I just became the guy who cleans I feel the like that's such a yeah. relationship thing. It's at some point when a couple, they, they're together, they stay together for a while. They have these things that they, oh, why don't you mature you do this? together? Yeah. Why sure. don't you do that? Why don't you do this? Uh, do this. We're not even. And then at some point there's this like acceptance, like, well, you know what? I'm this yeah. side for us. You do this side for us. Yeah. yeah. And okay. The division and it's, of labor. Yeah. It was such, you a, accept it, it was such a dumb aha moment for me in our relationship because it's like, I care so much. She doesn't give a shit about that. Yeah, right. Like I care so much about that, that what am, why am I putting that on her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like she doesn't do a lot of other things. So I just need to train myself to totally. recognize when she's doing those other things that maybe I don't do, or I don't like totally. to do. I got to step up and do those things that I, the way I like my Jessica house. Jessica reached Absolutely. that with me where, um, and this might be a surprise to you guys, but I'm, I'm a bit, um, absent minded and not very organized. <laughs> what? And <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, and I, I guess give me shit for it. Anyway, <laughs> she, uh, she, uh, she reached a point where she's like, Surprising. Oh, like you're just, you're not, not being, you're not just, you're not trying to be like a jerk or whatever. You literally are just super absent minded. And it's my job in the relationship to just to organize everything. And I'll I'll do that. Yeah. And then I know there's certain things for myself that for her where I know like, oh, well, this is my side of that. I accept that. This is why you have a partner. Yeah. It's so funny because in business, I don't know about you guys, but for, I think it's easier, maybe not. At least it was for, I know for us, one of the reasons why our partnership works so well is we recognize our strengths and weaknesses and we just move forward on our strengths and the other and everybody else picks up the weaknesses aspect of it and we just move forward and we crush yeah we totally crush doing that you got to do that in a relationship yeah too. It, that's it's rare though too in business i mean You're right. i'm i'm lucky cuz people are like weird about it right they do i mean I, I one of the things i recently just did uh our presentation for our business in my my private hampton group right so i'm with all these other founders and ceos and the thing the for sure and i get this anytime i talk to somebody else that has a business like they're always so baffled by like wait, there's four of you that are all owners. Like, and you guys have all these things going on. Like who does what? And yeah. how do you decide what, like, what, what happens when a guy's working way more than another? Like they have all these questions around like, what does that look like? And it's like, you know, and I, and, and it's a great analogy or segue to what we're talking about with the, the husband and wife thing. It's like, it's not like I'm down there cleaning. And I'm like, Oh, I cleaned for an hour and 20 minutes and it only took her 45 minutes to put Max down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, this is not fair. You know, so like, it's just like, it doesn't work D that different way. animals. And yeah. it's the same thing for us. It's not like, you know, one of us go, Sal goes like, man, I spent a year writing that book and these guys didn't have to do anything for it. Like what? It's like, nobody is measuring yeah. like who is working more hours on it. It's like, yeah. listen, we're a team. Just, and, and this is why I love sports so much because you can the, see that when a team has it. Oh, it's the, it's what makes the be, the championship teams. This is what like in professional sports, everybody's fucking a killer. Yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. is good. Yeah. Like, there's nobody who's not there. They were the, they were the greatest of their town. All, all of them are. And they all get into this in the, and then what makes a professional team so great is they find a way to dissolve the egos or a, a, align themselves to work cohesively and it, and nobody is measuring Oh, you scored more points, or I got you. You always pass ball. You never. It's like they they care about winning more than they care about their personal accolades, and that's how that's what makes a successful well, business. That's what makes 100%. a successful marriage, is learning that you 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 go to war with these people. 
the uh, the the desired outcome is to win, is to dominate, is to crush at all costs. And if that means sometimes you're having to carry the boat the most, who cares? Actually, if anything, yeah. I'm going to add to that. It's an honor. The yes. attitude is when you're in that position and you feel that way about the people you're working with or who you're married to, and you're in that position, it's not a, well, it's my turn to shoulder the burden. It's more like a, finally, I get to provide this. This is an honor. I get to do this for these people. It's a totally different feeling and it produces the best outcomes, period. End of story. Yeah. yeah but it's a, an attitude. It's all about rock, the attitude. You know, now it's my time to kind of put up uh, some points here. You know, yeah. it's like, it's, you just, you pass it around and, and you hope that uh, you're, you're a winning team in that sort of. Uh, and if you did a good job marrying the right, you know, spouse and, or marrying the right business partners, then they're the ones, they're, they're the type that will appreciate and see that. And then they'll want to come over the top when it's their turn to carry the rock. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. when it's their turn, when they have to step up and do their thing, they'll do it with pride. They'll it's do it with honor. They'll, yeah. They'll do it in a, in a sense. It's like, Oh man, Justin did, did so much for us in this. I'm like, well, I can't I, wait to, I can't wait to show him what I'm going to bring to the table next right. week. Well, yeah. So it's like, you got to have that attitude and you can't, nitpick and measure but it's it is rare it's rare it's rare that you, you know what it takes you just said marry the right person uh, <coughs> someone might be like well how, you know who, how am i going to find this perfect person <coughs> it's not that i think the thing you want to look for is are they growth minded are you with somebody or are you partnering with people that are growth minded because you're going to encounter lots of challenges and a growth minded person is going to try to figure out how they could grow and evolve to work through these challenges. Somebody who's rigid, yeah. when the challenges come, you're screwed, you know? But like, I know you guys are, oh, we're all super growth minded. So every time mm -hmm. we hit a challenge, everybody's trying to figure out, okay, how do I get better? Or what can we do to move, you know, through this challenge? Oh yeah, that's, that's like the key. Huge red flag. Totally. If you're like in the dating circle right now and out there yeah. trying to find a partner and you, you're going on dates and you're hearing the person sitting across the dinner table saying things like, I am this way, or yeah. these are the things. Like super rigid. This, yeah, this is the way. Yeah, this is just yeah. how I am. This is you're like, oh shit, you run, uh, bro, run away. <laughs> so it's like that. It's just yeah. like that. You don't even want to try and be that person. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Even if it fits what you think is uh, uh, compatible to you. People that say stuff like that are just not growth minded. Like you, Plus I, you identify as this character who only does this thing. It's like, dude, you're not growth minded. Plus, at you're, all. you're assuming if even if they did fit you perfectly, you're assuming that you're not going to change. You think you're going to be the same person in ten or twenty years? First of all, if you are the same person you are today in twenty years, something went terribly wrong. Yeah, yeah. you can. How like how is that even possible? Unless you were like in a va put in a vacuum yeah, tube, your development just stopped. I used frozen. to think that was so funny when I'd meet, I'd run into people that I hadn't seen in like ten or twenty years, or like old high school people when we get together mm. when I got older, and they'd be like, "You're so different. You changed so hope much." So. And I don't, that would be my <laughs> response. I'd be like, "Thank yeah, God, completely." I yeah. definitely <laughs> do not want to be known as like yeah. I was. Ex I'm exactly the same as I was when I was in high school with you. <laughs> You know what's funny? Yeah. You just reminded but me. But some of, people like want that. They're bro, like yeah, they, they're well, mad I at you be because anything you're not the same my high school yeah, the same kid. You, you just reminded me of a study that I read on life satisfaction. Life satisfaction uh, slowly goes up over the years up until we're like seventy or eighty. So, in other words, the as you get older and less able bodied, oftentimes more sick, your life satisfaction score tends to rise throughout most of your life until towards the end. Now, why is that? Wisdom, experience. Mm -hmm. You grow as a person. Life actually gets harder, by the way, as you get older. It doesn't get easier, uh, but yet you get more life satisfaction. I was talking with, we were watching, what were we watching? Jessica and I were watching something. Um, I don't remember what we were watching, but I was commenting on how old cultures tend to treat their elderly Probably, versus that, how, probably the blue zone. Maybe, one. maybe. Yeah. And versus how American culture treats us oh, our, yeah. our, our yeah. elderly. Because I said, you know, it totally, American, it totally was that blue zone. Yeah. One. There's, there's parts of that where they revere the, the, yes. the hundred year old woman. It everybody was. celebrates. Yes, yes. Yeah. I told her, cause I said, American culture has done some incredible things <clears throat> in American culture. The reason why it does incredible things. It's a, it's a new, it's a very new culture in comparison to lots of other cultures, which are very old. And there's value to that. Like we're very innovative. Yeah. We're the most innovative culture uh, ever. Right. We're innovative. Um, we we well, it's multicultural. Yes, but it's but it's innovative because it's new. It's young. Yeah. Um, we we value independence. We value people who are creative and different, standing out from the crowd. It's very different from other old cultures where you want to form into the crowd. Is tend to what they do, what they tend to do. But one bad thing is we don't revere our elderly. Mm -hmm. You go to old cultures. Go to China, Japan. Go to the Mediterranean, and the oh, elderly we just are. The elderly. Oh, if you're yeah. sitting on a bus. 
and somebody older than you is standing up next to you, even if they're able bodied, you sit, you let them sit down. Otherwise, everybody's looking at you like, what's wrong with you, right? Yeah. You want to listen to the old person's story. You want to open the door for them. You want to hear what they have to, you know, you don't, you don't, do, you know, act disrespectful to an old lady, an old man or whatever. Now they revere their elderly and there's a reason for that. There's tremendous value that they bring to the table because of their wisdom. They're basically uh, you, but with way more experience. So it's like, why do we treat the elderly the way we do when really you're looking at a 70 year old person, that person, imagine when you're 70, what you, if you know, with your current rate of growth, where you're going to be yeah. there, like that is wisdom right there. That's applicable to you as a human. Definitely tap into that. Yeah, you know? no, I, I agree. I, I've told you guys before this, I, it was actually a really, uh, it's a strong memory I have as a trainer because I, it shocked me. And I, it was when I was running boot camps. At that time, I had like, I don't know, 20, 20 or so people that were in this camp. <clears throat> and I used to love to talk to them uh, for the same reason that you said, like, because they were all advanced age, right? I was, they were the youngest person, I think, in that class was 50, you know, or late 40s was the youngest, uh, all the way up to like 70, so yeah. years old. And you were in your 20s. Yeah, I'm in my 20s at this time. <clears throat> and I remember, uh, you know, going like, you know, asking them stories about their lives and stuff like that. And they all in the, in the group, I've got everything, everything from people that had five, six kids to older people that only have one kid or no kid, or like kids are all way grown, still growing, raising kids. So I had a great eclectic group. Right. And I remember asking, you know, when you guys all reflect on your lives, like, is there, was there a phase like, you know, like your twenties were like the, like you think of your 20 to 25, like those were the best times. Like what was, I asked all of them what their best times, every single one of them, said right now. Yeah. And I thought that's, and I'm looking yeah. at, and then it's like 70 year olds that can barely squat and move. And like, and I'm thinking they're like retired and just kind of do their thing. And I'm like, really? Hmm. Every single one of them said right now mm -hmm. is the best time of my life. Like I'm, I, I thought that was really fascinating, but it highlights yep. the point you're making right now is that, and, and, I, and of course I inquire, like, what do you mean? Like, why, why now? Why not when you were 30? And, and I'm like, wow, you know, you're more established. You're much wiser. You're calmer about these things. You've settled in with your life partner. You've kind of seen you, it all. You've raised your yeah. kid. Like how funny is it that that we believe the opposite? We look at media. Like yeah, we you, think youth is so. Well, look, it, based on media, who would you think has the best sex? Young people in their twenties. Not true. Look at the data. Couples in their fifties who've been married for years and sixties report better sex. <laughs> what? Huh? That's the truth. Mm -hmm. So it's like so distorted. Why is it so distorted? Because youth and sex sells. So we get this distorted image of what's important, just like the fitness industry, right? They make money off supplements. So if you just looked at the industry and the media, you would think that supplements play a much bigger role than they actually do. And in fact, they make, they play almost no role in your progress. Yeah, It's the same thing with the media. It's all about youth, about sexy, about hot, about buying things. So you think, oh, this is, this is what life's all about because it's presenting this image and it's distorting reality. Reality is <laughs> those things are not important. And, the, and then like the sex part, it gets better as mm. you become old and wrinkly, which yeah. is, which is, you know, funny ironic. Right? I know, I know. We just uh, don't want to watch the videos. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of a, yeah. yeah just it's like, I tried it. <laughs> I tried it. I <laughs> can't get into me. it. Uh, Adam, I wanted to ask you how your abstinence from cannabis has been going. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been super consistent now. I'm over, over a month. It's been over a month that I, I haven't, not bad. <clears throat> I, you know, it was interesting. I had a week last week, just a lot on our, our plate with uh, business and some personal stuff. Good, all good stuff though, like good personal stuff. So, but it was keeping me up at night, and I was having our time. And Doug heard me, and he's like, "Hey, have you uh, tried the Ned Sleep?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I like totally discounted it. Yeah, yeah, no, I've done that. I'm doing my mellow. I'm doing this. I'm doing. I'm like, I'm doing everything right. I'm doing everything, and I'm still not sleeping well right now." And I went home and I thought about, it. I was like, you know, actually, I really haven't, I don't think I actually have tried the Ned sleep since I've, I've been off cannabis. Oh, and so I, I bet you were hella sensitive bro. to it. So, I mean, that was really interesting. Because your for, cannabinoid receptors are I haven't tried, ha yeah, exactly. I have not tried hmm. the Ned sleep since I have uh, abstained from uh, cannabis for this period of a time. And boy, it only took like one little dropper. And I felt that it it felt like a, a warm splash of like water came over me. Like it was, <laughs> I'm serious. It was a, a really like cool feeling considering that I'd done that a million times already, right? Or not a million exaggeration, but a lot. 
Yeah. And, you know, and I, and I, I would report back that I, I could feel a little yeah. bit of a difference from it for sure. And I, I like the product, right. Even though I, I, I what was about, the timing of it? Like when did you take it before bed? About 45 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when I really felt feel it and then go to bed. Yeah. So I took it like, uh, I want to say after dinner sometimes around seven. So mind you, I ate too. So it might've hit me faster mm -hmm. if I was on an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. So I'd already eaten dinner. And so it took about 45 minutes, you know, to, to like that, get that feeling. Yeah. But, um, Really interesting because I was for a, a long time. I can't remember, or for it's been a long time since I felt that much um, angst. I don't even know if I. I don't like saying anxiety because I wasn't. It wasn't like a, it wasn't like a negative thing. I wasn't. I wasn't feeling. I was like almost like a little kid. Yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah a little bit excited yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. angst. Right, that would be the yeah, best I know word. That, yeah, yeah. I know that, so I kind of had angst a lot, and and really I knew that it was there, and that's why I wasn't sleeping well. And I had tried all these other things, nothing. Really, and then taking that, I like let it, like I said, it felt like it washed away with a, a warm thing of water. It was really wild. And I'm, of course, attribute that to being off cannabis. And um, I must have been ultra sensitive uh, to it. So that was pretty cool that yeah. that happened. But, that's great. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Huh. That's so, awesome. Speaking of partners, uh, are your kids all taking the kids multivitamin, the Haya? Yeah. Consistently? Max loves it. He takes it every day. Well, we talk about, uh, you know, we were earlier, I could have brought this up when we were talking about that too, because we've trained him to get, <clears throat> do certain things. One of the things he's trained to do is to take his multivitamin every day. And because it's, I mean, it's not Flintstone sugar good, but it's still mm -hmm. flavorful enough that he likes to take it, that he's actually trained to ask for it. And it's in that bright yellow bottle. So he knows where it's at all times. So he'll come, you know. When we partnered with them, I did more <clears throat> research into kids' multivitamins. They're right. Yeah. You know how they talk about it's not a gummy candy. It's it, dude, the, the kids' multivitamins are basically sugar. Yeah. Glorified. Yeah. It's just candy. Candy, dude, yeah. that you're giving your kids. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I know. That's why I've avoided it for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's just it's just literally just I mean, I wouldn't even candy. honestly, I wouldn't even have given it to Max if it wasn't for you finding them. Yeah. You found them first and then you're like, Oh yeah, this is legit. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, okay, well then other than that, I would have I would have just tried to do it through Whole Foods. Dude, did you guys Maybe you did. Did you listen to the All In podcast where they talked about the reverse vaccine for autoimmune issues? No, I've actually been. Oh, I've actually been really. Oh, you know what? Ever since they did their, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, did their uh, reverse All In vaccine? Summit. Yeah, I haven't been listening. No, it's an inverse vaccine. They call it. Okay. Uh, what is that, bro? This is okay. So autoimmune issues are like the bane of Western medicine right now, right? Like multiple sclerosis. Crohn's disease, rheumatoid yeah, arthritis. Psoriasis. These are all the chronic issues. Yeah, psoriasis. Really like good answers for the only options we have are to systematically or generally depress the immune system. Okay, so let's bring your total immune system down so you don't get this hyper reaction. But that's not good either because you have all kinds of potential negative and sometimes really bad effects from depressing the immune system. Everything from like increased rates of cancer to lots of other diseases because you need your immune system to be functional. By the way, an immune, an autoimmune issue is when your body recognizes a protein in your own body as a foreign invader and attacks it. It could be in the skin. It could be in the you know myelin sheaths over your nerves, like a multiple sclerosis. It could be in the gut, like in Crohn's disease. So it's literally your immune system destroying your body is what autoimmune issues are. Um, and uh, autoimmune, you could kind of loosely put food allergies in that as well, where your body identifies uh, something that shouldn't be considered a foreign invader as this thing that they need to mount this crazy attack on. Well, anyway, they've taken these, a vaccine. And what they do is they, they use a, like a glycolytic, I think encasing, which is basically like a sugar molecule. And they put this in the liver and the liver takes this in this protein. So let's say it's a, you have a skin issue. They'll take the protein that your body's identifying as a um, foreign invader. They'll encase it in, in I think it's a, like a glycolytic encasing. They bring it in the liver. The body then goes, oh, this, I guess, isn't a bad, this is not a bad protein. Okay. Shuts it off. They did this in mice. What? They did this in mice. So they can genetically modify mice to make them develop things like multiple sclerosis or other diseases. So they know like these are all going to get MS. They gave this inverse vaccine to mice. No it MS. It? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? So yeah. how is this not like this is mainstream? It is. It's going crazy. Okay. The, this is going all over the place. So it's pretty crazy. So it's able to kind of sneak past that like aggressive, like defensive response from the immune system. Yes. So now your body, so they, so they, this is what they do. They take a special group of cells in the liver that present antigens to T cells and tell them that they're safe. 
So the liver has these special cells because while it filters blood, it must also differentiate between dangerous foreign antigens, like from bacteria, and safe ones. So your liver already p possesses these cells that can say, oh, these are safe, basically. So it's using this natural system in the liver, and they did this with the MS, and it worked. Bro, oh, that's so that's amazing. Awesome, now, let me, so this is this could be the beginning of a com total revolution. Yeah, with whole new auto class of medicine. Though. Yes. Yeah. Now, okay, well, okay, okay. Let's play. Let's play this out. Um, you get this, okay? Let's say I, I get this right. Yeah. Reverses psoriasis. Now, what I would predict would end up happening is these people having to use this quite frequently because we know that if you go and binge eat again and you have potential a leaky gut oh. but those proteins could leak into the bloodstream again and then i would think could so that's different than autoimmune right food intolerance isn't that how it comes isn't that how it starts no though? no autoimmune is uh we're not quite sure what's happening with autoimmune issues like why is your body recognizing your skin as a foreign invader. Yeah, as, why is it target what it targets? Yeah, or the or the thyroid, right? With like Hashimoto's, right? So this is different. I my I don't know what the side effects are gonna be or the potential effects. Maybe I don't know. Who knows what the potentials could be, but for now, this is the first time they've ever been able to get these like mice to like not get MS. Hmm. And they're supposed to. So it's a huge it's potential, right? A huge potential. But this could be one of the greatest breakthroughs oh in my modern God. medicine. Autoimmune. I mean, how many, what's the percentage of people that suffer from some? It's growing yeah, too. It's got to be huge these days. Yeah. It's growing. Yeah. And the treatments are terrible. I have a family member with Crohn's disease <clears throat> and it's so bad that they have to do a form of chemo so you, in order to get their Have body. you heard me talk about the research that's on, uh, on uh, childhood trauma related to autoimmune? Yeah. That, that's interesting to me, right? So yeah. if that, it, like, hmm. there's got to be some sort of correlation to stress. Of course. And, and, and obviously we know that stress uh, like triggers it right yeah, to flare right. up if you have any sort of autoimmune issues, but it's interesting that more than fifty percent of people that have suffered from childhood trauma also have autoimmune. Issues. I think it has my guess. Is my theory. My theory is that if you mentally view yourself uh, as the enemy, as bad, as not good, as garbage, eventually the immune system will follow. Mm -hmm. That's my theory. So, and if you're going through a lot of trauma as a child children are programmed to internalize. You, if, if there's something wrong with your caregiver, it's better survival for you to believe that it's you so that you change and yeah. fix something so that you don't get tossed aside or whatever. So if you constantly view yourself as not good. There's so much psychological influence. Yeah. I think that yep. uh, we're still just learning yep. and unpacking. Uh, Nonetheless, affects your you come out of that physiology. trauma. Okay. Now That's that what, happened. Like, okay, can we teach the immune system something different now? Yeah. I mean, that'd be awesome. I know. That'd right. Be amazing. Because like I said, like the treatments are terrible. Have you seen people who treat like psoriasis and eczema with the steroids and then stop taking them because they stop working? What happens? They, uh, it gets worse. Way bad. I mean, that happened to me. Like they, I, they, I, I knew a girl that this. she had to wait. It like took three months for it to reverse out. She hmm. stopped using everything. <coughs> Her skin got so bad. She had to stay home and look like she got burned. I mean, and I wish I wish that again. I never went down the path of taking the shots I did years ago because it, it, my psoriasis, I thought was, I mean, of course, when you have it, you think it's awful or it's huge or it's a big thing. But I mean, it was literally like a, like yeah. a spot that big. And in, in, in like a couple of random spots in my body. And that was enough for me to be like, oh my God, I need to go fix. And I would get the shots. And the shots originally work. Would, would work. Like it would get it. And you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then after like a couple of years of doing that, then it like nothing, then it wasn't working anymore. And then it was like, oh, fuck it, I'm gonna stop doing it. And then it just, wow. Yeah. Yikes. Oh yeah. And then to this day, like it's my psoriasis today, even though my diet and stress and all the other things are in more check today than they ever were you know, say 15, 20 years ago, it's worse than what it was. So wow. it's, uh, and I really attribute it to, to, to that cycle that I went through when I was injecting the steroid to try and, you know, suppress it. Cause it really wasn't Crazy. addressing anything. Uh, who's got a shout out today. Do you, do you want to shout out the cake shot or what's it called? Oh, Marlon. Yeah. Uh, have we given him a shout out? I don't think I've given, uh, we should give more cause Marlon's going to be in here today. He doesn't, uh, he's not even going to hear it. He's, a, he's got a local, um, gym. <laughs> Actually, Marlon is actually a, a good friend of mine. He trained with me when, so we were getting it. We were both working out at, um, uh, it's Marfit is his Instagram. So his Instagram is underscore uh, Mar, M-A-R-F-I-T underscore. And then he's got a local business. Basically, he, I mean, I think it's brilliant what he's doing. He's trying to be the 
Brett Contreras of Northern California. Mm. I mean, he's he's attracted uh, all the local girls that are trying to build their butt, and he's completely built a business around that. And he's just a, he's a, a good guy, really good guy. Uh, been a trainer for a long time now. Competed with me. He was a, was he pro like you? Uh, I don't know if Mar went pro. I know he was chasing it when I left. Um, he had, <laughs> it's a bunch of, oh yeah, it's, a, butt it's all butt, I mean, it's literally <laughs> all, girls working all, out their all butt it's, stuff. It's, I, <laughs> for the longest time, I, it, Marlon's going to hear this, you know, I think it's gonna be funny. I used to think he was gay. I thought he was gay for the longest time until I met him. <laughs> yeah, I did. He, I totally thought he was, I thought, I thought he was. the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's totally a straight dude. And I had no idea uh, the whole time that we were like hanging out. I just assumed he was a gay guy. I was just like, yeah. I mean, I have a couple other gay friends and I'm like, yeah. his, his personality just came off like flamboyant yeah. like that. And I just thought he was. <laughs> And then I remember him telling me about his girl, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know you were <laughs> that this whole time that you kind of liked me. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you're disappointed. <laughs> I was totally like that. thing. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> oh, you like my so, physique? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So shout out to Mar, dude. Much love to him. He'll be in here today. So, and he's got a he's got a great little gym too. Joy Mode was created because the products in the market are terrible, and they know they could do better. What products? Products that help with blood flow and quality erections, and libido, and sexual performance. This is a natural product with substances and ingredients that are backed by science. Check them out. It actually works. Check them out. Go to usejoymode.com. That's use, J-O-Y, mode.com forward slash mind pump. Enter mind pump at checkout and get 20% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Susanna from North Carolina. Hi, Susanna. How can we help you? Hi, hi. Very weird to be talking to you. Um, but I'll get right to my question. But I do have to start by saying thank you. You three have made such a crazy impact on my life. I I can't even begin to say thanks, but I'm going to anyway. So thanks to you three, to Doug, and to everybody that works so hard behind the scenes. It's much appreciated. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Of course. So Kind of in summary, my question is how to approach MAPS Anabolic, which I assume is the right program for me, given my main goal is kind of regulating my hormones, my cycle, and of course, also focusing on improving strength and muscle composition. So just a really brief background. I'm 25 now, and I've been a competitive athlete for the majority of my life. So I was a swimmer and then a collegiate mid-distance distance runner. Um, and I was pretty classic overtraining, obsessive exercise, under eating, and I ended up losing my period for about seven years completely. Now, over the last year, I'm in a much better place. So I found you guys about a year ago, and I have since started focusing on strength training, which I've always loved. So it's really nice to be back there. Um, and I've definitely still been overtraining, but but I've been mainly focused on strength training, really cut down on the cardio, eating a lot more. And I've seen so many benefits, both physically and mentally, which has been awesome. Um, and I have gotten my cycle back, but it's extremely irregular. Some days or some months, it just doesn't show up and it's just kind of all over the place. Uh, so with that being said, kind of currently, after some pretty heavy hinting, my husband got me MAPS Anabolic for my birthday, which was awesome. I went through the pre-phase. I did do some weeks where I made it a, a three-day week workout just because I wanted to be in the gym a little bit more, but I liked it so much. I did it five weeks, but then I hit pause before going into phase one because I was a little bit unsure how to approach it. So that kind of brings me to my question, which is kind of two questions, but the first part is I'm not sure whether you all would recommend I do the two or three day a week foundational workout. The main reason I would want to do three is just because I like practicing the big lifts more than once a week. Um, and then kind of with that, I've started enjoying sh somewhat shorter workouts, so like 40 minutes as opposed to 60, 70. So I don't know if you'd support me maybe splitting one or even two of the workouts up over the course of two days. So that's kind of the first half. And then the second half is just a quick add on. There are some exercises, namely the hip thrust that I really like because I am pretty quad dominant. Um, and so I guess just, is there a way to add that in? Can I just add a couple sets? Can it replace one exercise or should I really just run through exactly as it's laid out the first time around? Great question. You're, yeah. you're on the right track. I think what would, well, let me ask you some more questions. You, you said you're, you're feel like things are starting to balance out a little bit. 
How's your sleep and how's your your caloric intake? I, I know you know you you noted in there that and this is very common for athletes, especially female athletes. You've had some issues with food in the past. How yeah. how are your calories now and how sleep and stress and all that stuff? Yeah, for sure. So sleep has definitely gotten a lot better. I've always been a pretty bad sleeper, um, but I would say I get probably seven ish hours a night, maybe eight sometimes. And then with the caloric intake, that has also improved. <laughs> a lot. So back in college, when I was running 40, 50 miles a week and cross training, I was probably eating like 2000 calories a day. And now I don't track much because it can be a little bit triggering for me. But on days that I do, I'm between 22 and sometimes up to 2700. And I'm not really seeing any, any increase in fat. I feel just generally much better. Awesome. Oh, that's good. good I would, I would push the calories I'd keep them above around 2,500 or more based off of what you just said. Three days a week is perfectly fine mm-hmm. until you get to phase three. Then I'd go down to two days a week because phase three is a lot of volume. There's a lot more reps, low rest. So then I'd go down to two days a week when you get to phase three, as far as hip thrusts are concerned, you can go ahead and swap out the front squats in uh, both phases in all the phases and throw in hip thrusts. And that'll be the, the the program that you follow, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. I think you'll I think you'll be very pleased with how your body responds. I don't have much to add to that. I think that's <clears> the <throat> exact same advice. Yeah. Are you doing any any running right now in conjunction with this? Or are you just strength training? Yeah, so I had stopped running for a while because I had a hip injury, but I I've started kind of up again. I mean, like ten miles a week. Just slow. I do that and a lot of walking, but that's pretty much the only cardio I do. Okay, that's, and it sounds yeah. easy to, for you. Yeah, 10, 10 miles a week is that's okay. Not- but I do want to highlight that if uh, if we have a goal of building our booty because we're quad quad dominant, that's not helping you. Just so you know. Yeah, I know. So yeah, just know. keep. I'm I'm totally okay with it. Um, I would prefer you did mid distance hi- hikes and like uphill maybe uphill sprints. I was things just gonna like say that. if you yeah. did mid distance, if you're okay with sprinting, yeah, I would love to see you sprint yeah. uphill. Yeah, sprinting up uphill hill would be way for better you. for you than going for flat long runs. Uh, in, in in particular with the, the developing the butt, like it sounds like you have a pretty good balance as far as how much volume of training you're doing. I'm okay with that. But if you came to me and, and I heard the goal, right? Like this is like, I want to make sure health is number one, make sure your periods are regular, eating enough food. And then I also want to do hip thrust because I'm quad dominant. So that says, says to me that you want to build your butt. I would tell you that running that much is going to make it really difficult because you're going to continue to reinforce that quad dominant signal by by running all the time. I would also emphasize that with the hip hinging, like with your your thrust, your your uh, hip bridging in your trigger sessions, and and making sure too you take like a hip circle and we we add that in as an emphasis uh, that you're continually kind of repeating that signal, so we're getting that kind of stimulus that you're going to carry over into your foundational work. Yeah. So two things. Uh, so with the hill sprints, <clears throat> you want to treat them like strength training. So let's say normally you would go on a run and it would take you 20 or 30 minutes, give yourself the same amount of time and you would do sets of sprints. So you would sprint up a hill as fast as you can. Yeah. You'd come down, wait till you caught your breath, wait till everything's ready to go where you can explode again. So it's more anaerobic. It's anaerobic. Yeah. It's muscle building. Yeah. Um, not so much like the, the distance type running and that'll actually probably build a little muscle sure. on you as well. Do you well. have access to a sled too, by the way? I don't. And I keep uh, trying to think ways to like make a makeshift one because you guys talk about it so much, but I, so I typically work on my garage and we don't really have much of like a yard. Yeah. So I don't know how I could mimic that. I wish I did. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's a bit expensive. You push your car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. yeah. Yeah. Until yeah, until you want to make that kind of an investment. But it is a great one to, especially a, a drag, a sled drag, building up volume there would really yeah. help kind so, of post to your chain. Do you know what your body fat percentage is at? I don't. I know back in college, we I did a DEXA scan and it was like 14%. Yeah. Now I've put on close to 20 pounds since then. I honestly, I don't want to try and guess because I'm probably off. I don't know. Yeah, I have you, no idea. You, you look pretty lean just by looking at your face. So I would, you got to push the calories and you're probably going to have to keep pushing the calories for a little while consistently to see your period become a little more consistent. That's the first well, how long is that I would go? How long have you been in that? I mean, I actually think her calories are great where she's at. I don't think just because her period's still spotted. Well, I know, but that, that might have to do with just it has how long has it been since you've been eating that many calories and not really pushing the running like crazy? Has it been a year or has it been way less? No, I'd say it's been probably 
about a year. Now I will say okay. one thing that I'm changing okay. is I was kind of intermittent fasting, not really purposefully, but I have kind of read more that, oh, yeah. that can kind of yeah, we don't, women's hormones. Yes. So I've stopped this week. Oh, okay. So yeah, I mean, give, give it some time with that. I think that's for sure. Stop that. That and was always, the, yeah, that was the, the first thing that we would always do with female clients, uh, with for their period regularity. There's always stress management, gut health. But the first thing with someone like you would be calories. And really, it's just you, you want to tell your body it's safe to get pregnant. Not that you're not necessarily trying to get pregnant, but that's the point. So I would I would go I would go 2,500, a little more, push the calories, just be consistent with it. Let tell your body that it's safe, and then you'll see probably start to see more regularity. Unless there's some gut issues that are underlining, which you know that's kind of common, especially with athletes. We tend to have inflamed guts, and that tends to be a common issue as well. But uh, I would do that, and you should notice within 30 to 45 days, maybe 60 days, so over the course of two months, uh, kind of nice, two nice consistent periods. Yeah, I think um, I think right away by eliminating the fasting, she's going to see a response from that alone. Ju yeah, ju just the fasting, will, because fasting will do the same thing. Yeah. So It'll tell your she body. Just now, you said you just stopped it last week, right? Yeah, this week. Oh, yeah. How long what? were you fasting for? I mean, I wouldn't really do it on purpose. I just felt kind of like slower if I had breakfast when I first got to work. So I'd probably have a cup or two of coffee and then eat around 12, stop around nine or so. Do you get lethargic from eating in the morning? I do kind of. I just makes, yeah, it just makes me a little bit more tired. Yeah. Eat a fat protein yeah, breakfast. More protein. Don't eat any carbs. It does sound like you might have a little bit of, of gut stuff going on because that's kind of a telltale sign, right? You'll eat. Uh, people with gut issues will eat, um, something with carbohydrates or starches and they'll get this crash, crazy crash mm -hmm. of energy. So mm -hmm. you could just do literally like, you know, four scrambled eggs, some bacon with your coffee and that sh you should be okay. You should notice no, like, like drop in energy from that. Are you in our, uh, holistic health forum, the free one with Cabral's team? No. Okay. I'm not. You should join that. You should join that. And as you're going through this, uh, you know, maybe trying different foods for breakfast, uh, it's a free forum. We got a, a bunch of uh, doctors and medical professionals that are in there to support. Um, and if Sal is right, that there's potential uh, underlining gut issues that you have going on, they'll help you troubleshoot that. And then that would be the place you go mm -hmm. to get the testing done and then for them to take you through that. So that that could be very well a possibility. And they'll probably even be able to pick up on it faster than we would. Yeah. Do you have a, a stressful job? Are you wearing scrubs? Do you have a, a stressful job? Looks like you're wearing scrubs. Honestly, no, I'm a genetic counselor and I okay. love my job. So okay. I just got out of grad school. I'm less stressed than I've ever been in my life. So. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're on the right track. You really are. Yeah, I, mean, I think you're in a good place. Three right days now. a week, phase one, phase two, two days a week, phase three. Uh, switch out front squats for hip thrusts. Keep the calories consistent. Go get strong. And yeah, and if you're getting stronger consistently, you're on the right path for yep. sure. Awesome. All right. Okay. Thanks for calling okay. in. Yeah, thanks so much. All the best to you and your families. Thank you, you, you too. too as well. Thank you. Yeah, good. That was pretty straightforward. She's in a good yeah. place. Yeah. I think she's in a really good place. And I even think because twenty five hundred calories is a lot of calories, bro. That's a. I think well, she, she was at twenty two to twenty seven. So I'm like, stay consistent in the middle. You know what that usually means to me? I'm more often than not closer to twenty two than I am. Doing. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. That's a fair like with someone like that who does extreme stuff. That's right. she, you're, she probably would overestimate on calories yep. and underestimate on how much training she's doing. So. Yep. I, and the the only other thing that I would add her to, to consider if you're if you really want to build the butt and you're doing this repetitive running on flat ground, that's part of the problem is that you are so quad dominant. Yeah, it's distance competing. Distance running is a butt like uh, burner. In other words, you're gonna lose your butt. <laughs> Sprinting <laughs> yeah. is a butt builder. Disintegrator. Very yeah, different. Right? Yeah, yeah. Our next caller is Meg from Pennsylvania. Meg, what's happening? How can we help you? That looks so real. <laughs> Thank you guys. I yeah, do take those trying. backgrounds real serious. Um, <laughs> So question here, right? It's the crossover between weightlifting and mobility. Um, so I'm an avid spinner. I spin five to seven times a week, 45 minute classes. Um, with that has come all of the traditional cyclist ailments, specifically tight hips, uh, ankle mobility opportunities. Um, and, and so I guess also for background, um, I do weightlift a couple times a week, two to three times a week. When I wrote in, I was running anabolic. This week I started uh, symmetry, right? So really exciting there. Um, and uh, you guys have really encouraged me in the mobility space. And, and I have seen a tremendous improvement from practicing things like 90-90s and combat stretch daily. 
right? So, so thank Sweet. you all, right? I really feel like you helped me personally there. Awesome. Um, yeah, and and I guess like uh, Instagram's figured out the algorithms figured out that I like mobility stuff now. So <laughs> my feed is just exploding with this content around hip mobility. And I was wanting you guys to weigh in. I sent some links that I think will help here. And it's this cross between like mobility work, but also weightlifting. Um, And so they're sitting leg raises, standing leg raises, and also using bands and kettlebells to weight them down, right? And the implication of this content, or at least what these like content creators are saying is that like, perhaps my hips aren't strong enough and that's what's causing some of the problem. Um, But like when I watch these exercises, I just like uh, my hip flexors start tingling, just watching them. Like, I'm like, I, this can't possibly help. So I was wanting you guys to kind of weigh in, like, should I be trying these things or, you know, it's like my gut reaction, right? Like this is not going to help my problem. So all mobility issues are a lack of strength. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, what happens is this because you, you know people are like, what do you mean by that? The central nervous system is what controls whether or not muscles are tight or not tight. And if it senses instability or it doesn't feel safe, it'll tighten muscles up, which means weakness, weakness which to means restrict weakness. to restrict mobility. Okay? okay, so so it's lack of strength. If your if your body was really strong in all kinds of different ranges of motion, you'd have no mobility issues. Tightness comes from your body sensing instability. Okay. That being said, what you sent was a lot of hip flexor strengthening exercises, which can be very valuable, but you do a lot of spin. Yeah. Your hip flexors are getting worked like crazy. Okay. Your hip issues, I'm going to guess, probably have to do with external, internal rotation uh, and abduction. Okay. And and by the way, when you do like the stuff that we teach, like the 9090s, and mm-hmm. you are supposed, and I don't know, have, did you go through our Maps Prime Pro webinar that we did? If you haven't done that, you should follow that. There's a free, um, there's a free webinar. Oh, go ahead. There's a free webinar online. It's mapsprimeprowebinar.com. Is that right, Doug, or just primeprowebinar.com? Prime Pro webinar. Primeprowebinar.com. I take you through 50 minutes of mobility work. The most important part is the cues. Cues. Because where 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 you are going to build strength is by in, in, in intensifying it in the isometric position. Increase so you can, that tension as much as you possible. can build strength without weights being there. So you don't necessarily have to add a band or add this stuff to to build strength in in the hips. And then you can do exercises like lateral sled drags or tube walking. Uh, movements like that to build even more strength there. But the main focus I would put you on is like really progressing the 90-90 with the hips. Yeah. M- Meg, let me give you an example of what I'm what, what I was talking about earlier because this might help you. Um it's not it, weakness doesn't mean you're weak necessarily. It means that your body doesn't feel safe in a particular range of motion or movement because it's lacking the stability to do so. And that can also happen mm. If you're so strong in one direction and the supporting directions don't necessarily match. So to give you an example, imagine if you put a kid in a wagon and you're going to pull the wagon. You're only going to pull it as fast as you think the kid can hold themselves up. Otherwise, you're going to pull too fast and your kid's going to fly out of the wagon. Okay? So your hips are probably really strong in that spin position. But they're probably the 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 lateral stability, your ability to yeah, bring your knees out and, in lateral. and rotate your hips, doesn't match the strength of the type of strength and stability you have moving in that direction. So it's going to tighten up. Everything's going to tighten up and try and keep you safe. Mm-hmm. So your strength in other directions doesn't match yeah. the strength that you've overdeveloped, and so that causes instability, which leads to immobility. Does that make sense? Yeah, because when I played pickleball for the first time the other week, I had to move laterally. I it was yes. like a cartoon; like I kind of fell over. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yep, that's Correct. why I was going to recommend Maps Performance <laughs> mainly because that's one of the uh, programs that we deliberately 
put emphasis on multi-planar type of strength, which, you know, if you're, if you're pretty much in that fixed position, a lot of times and spin is your thing, um, to get you outside of that, uh, and to rotate and to move laterally is going to be crucial for you to, to regain that kind of balance. Otherwise you're just going to overcompensate continuously. Your body's like smart. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to move and operate in a way that's, that you can pull off the movement, but it's not ideal. Can, yeah, I, can it, I ask uh, why spend five to seven days a week? Um, so I, I just really like spin. Um, I don't know if it's the community aspect. I'm sure it's partly the community aspect, but I also think there's an element of the individual performance in it all. Yeah. Um, I mean, I also walk and weight lift. How, right? long, how long have you been doing spin for like that? Uh, uh, I've actually backed down a lot, guys. I used to do way more um but two three years okay all right it's hard to believe because i hate spin so much when i hear someone say they love it i'm like you you're a big spinner no right? i'm just kidding yeah. um okay so that's good here's the deal you're doing way too much strength training and other shit to do that much spin you just there's t- you, that's a lot yeah even f- even one day a week of five days of spin okay so well, one one time a day on those days it's spin is not a leisurely bike ride of i, I, I know because i manage gyms it's intense workout. If you're strength training more than like once a week, it's too much. Okay, straight up. That's just going to be too much. In fact, you're probably chronically slightly overtrained is what I would guess. In fact, if you were my client, you hired me, I would say you're only going to strength train once a week and that's it. And then the rest of the time you could do mobility work. I, this this is what, the reason why I asked you where I was going with that question is it's important that we define what your goal is and what you really care about. Because if you came to me and you just said, oh, I, I, my, my hips are a little bit of an issue. What can we do to address it? I would re- recommend maybe performance and some mobility stuff, some lateral strength training to complement your spin class. But if you're like, I'm, I'm where I'm at body fat percentage wise, where I'm at strength wise, where I'm, I love where I'm at and I love what I do, I wouldn't take that away from you. But if you told me conflicting goals, I want to build this, or I want to look like this, or I want to be stronger this way. Like, then I would tell you the truth, which is our five to seven days of spin class is keeping us from getting your goals. So it really comes down to what do you really want? And yeah, if do you, you want us to support your spin? Yeah, which is we can do. Or do you want to move out of that a little bit and try something else? And it's it, there's no wrong answer here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what is your goal? What do you want out of exercise? What do you want? Well, what I want out of exercise and what I think spin gives me is mental sanity, right? Like, so I'm in the middle of dissertation right now for the PhD. I work oh, a full-time boy. job. <laughs> like spin is fun, social. Yeah. Like I'm not really looking to change that, right? That's fine. Um, mm-hmm. I started weightlifting, honestly, to get better at spin, uh, right? Um, mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. That's I, very I, helpful. I that, that, that's okay. That's okay. I live in There's, phase two of mass performance. That is super, like literally super helpful. That's right. Said. That's right. I would do strength training once a week, and then you can add uh, hip mobility movements. Like I think 90-90 is going to be your friend. Huge, yeah. I think lateral sled dragging would be an also another kind of strength slash mobility movement that you could do. Here and there. Honestly, um, simplify it and just do mass performance phase two. Stick there for a long period of time. I mean, that's got everything in it. It's everything you need in terms of multiplanar strength. But, I, I, but, but only one day a week. One day a week. Yeah, one day a exactly. week. One day a week, just that, and you're good. Do you have mass performance, Meg? I don't. All right, we'll send that to you. And, then, sure. and then just for queuing purposes, so you, you get the desired outcome, go look at that Prime webinar yes. that I did because how you do the mobility stuff is is the difference maker on how much strength and progress you'll see. Here's what'll happen. You're going to do the, if you follow his mobility class and you get to the hip part, you'll know if you're on the right track, if you feel immediately better, you'll do the movement, you'll stand up and be like, whoa, I feel so much better. You know, you're on the right. Hone in on that. Yeah. You know, you're on the right path because what the mobility movements do is they turn on the CNS in the way that you need to. So you'll temporarily have more stability, even though you haven't really built strength or muscle yet in the short term, you'll get more stability you, and you'll notice it. You'll and move around. And then use that move that you find the most benefit from as your primer going into your spin class. Yeah. So you I do think that the ninety ninety yeah. is going to be. What do you Definitely. what do you, what do you get a PhD in by the way? Uh, industrial engineering. Oh wow, good for you. That's awesome. Thank you. All right, cool. Well, we're going to send you performance and one of those foundational workouts a week in addition to what you're doing, yeah. and then check out that webinar, especially the hip portion. I think you're going to really benefit from that. 
Yeah. Okay. Go Thank get some guys. surf outside. Looks yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Meg. Take right, it easy. Have a good one. Take it easy, Meg. Right. Bye. Yeah, perfect. I mean, perfect. She answered exactly. Well, that's really gave us yeah, the answer. That is so focus. so important. Um, when when we as any coach or trainer gives advice to somebody because had she said something like, "Oh, Adam, I just want to lean out a little bit," or "I want to yeah, build my butt," or more aesthetic, or yeah, yeah, you yeah, give me an different. answer like that, I'm going to tell you what you're doing is wrong, and it's and that's the reason why you're not getting to where you want to be. But if you say I fucking love spin. And the only reason why I started strength training was to be better at spin. Whole different protocol. Totally. Whole different protocol. Because yeah. we don't give a shit about body fat percentage. We don't give a shit about building our butt or anything like that. All we care about is getting good at our spin because it gives us this mental break from all the schooling and shit we're doing. I'm not going to tell my client not to do that. Yeah. Yep. Even if I'm not a fan of that, if that's what it gives her and she's happy doing that, I'm going to give her the stuff that's going to make her the, better. The problem that. is, is that people are like, I want everything, you know, say, Hey, look, I want to start a business and be a millionaire yeah. within three years, but I really want more time with my family, my kids. And I want more time. How to do I all these hobbies. Yeah. How do I do it all? It's like, I, you can't. I, I, I do. Don't. I do want to highlight though. One thing that she did say, and just, just so she, when she hears this to keep your eye out on the self-awareness thing here to know that if this could be you, because I'm, I'm very familiar with classes, right? So I taught a lot of classes and the type of personality that loves this and, and says that gives them energy and stuff like that. It's what we call cortisol junkies. They are seeking that high because they, they're, they've, they're crushing it so hard at work or school. I bet she would hate like a slow yoga. Oh, just, and <laughs> yeah. so the reason why you feel so yeah. good from that Dreadful is you get, you get a dump. You get this huge adrenaline dump afterwards, and that is not a necessarily a hump, a uh, health, healthy thing. So keep that in mind that the, the the feeling that you get from that doesn't necessarily mean it's a healthy, good one that you're getting from that class. Justin said the exact same thing. He's like, when I get a dump, I feel so much better. <laughs> Every time I feel better. You <laughs> love not, spinning. It's not what I meant. Big spinner. Our next caller is Jake from North Dakota. Jake, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, uh, it's great to see you. Um, uh, I'll jump right into my question with uh, the background, a uh, little history. So um, 33 years old. Basically, been working out since I was 14. Um, been got quite a bit of time under my belt. Um, oh, a little bit nervous here. Um, so, last like strength and like looks and stuff like that have never been important to me. It's always been function, um, being stronger, healthier, helping out with day to day life and work. Um, a lot of that's been a big thing throughout my whole work or career has been working out to help help my job be easier. I've always been into a physical um, career. It's been mostly um, manufacturing that I've been in, manufacturing, construction. Um, but over about nine months to a year ago, I ran into a – just stressors were building up, and it was probably close to a year now. It, and – um, I just started listening to you guys and it's like at that point I had to start backing off of something. So I changed my workout program to more of something along the lines I didn't know about you guys at the time to like something more like your MAPS 15, except it was more like a half hour program to cut back because I was just there was just too much going on in life. So I cut back that and eventually it's just like I gotta either get rid of working out for a while or something else. So I stopped working out altogether about a year ago and then uh work proceeded to cause some more issues and i ended up um making a, a career path to switch or a decision to change career paths i should say um so ended up applying for a massage academy to go and go into massage therapy instead um basically between that career path change that i decided and Quitting working out is when I picked up listening to you guys, and I realized um, all of the like mental stressors and like mental stressors, financial issues, buying a new house, like all that big stuff that happened in life during that time, it all accumulates. I didn't realize that. I was like, well, it's just working out. I'm working out less. I'm working out less. Like, I'm fine. Like, I shouldn't be feeling so crappy. So, I guess. My main question is like how like I want to get back into working out here with school. So um, 
how do I stay? It's one of two questions, I guess. Um, how do you like identify and stay on top of or be aware of those stressors that are causing like your body responses before it's like excessive and negative, like I was running into? Um, like with hair loss, digestion issues. Um, like I wasn't even aware of like all that stuff was there. Like when I do start working out, what's a good way to stay ahead of that before it's just like it's starting to negatively impact the workout, day to day life, etc. Okay, yep. probably start with not listening to death metal before your workouts. <laughs> that would be a start. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, say it's, this is not a, this is not helping the cause over here. I probably. can never train appropriately. <laughs> yeah. It's always too hard. Yeah. Switch to Enya, I yeah. guess. No, here's the deal. Um, so typically, I would say you know if you're starting to feel worse, if you're losing your energy, if you're feeling sti- you know stiff or achy, poor sleep, th- poor sleep. Those are good signs. The problem is with that, and I got the impression, Jake that you do a very, very good job of disassociating yourself from bad feelings. So you kind of don't notice until they get really loud. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, okay, good. So I'm the same way. Mm -hmm. So here's what you might want to pay attention to. Pay attention to your self-medicating habits, whatever those may be, whether it's food or habits where you distract yourself or if you like alcohol or weed or or sugary food or whatever. Habits you know that you tend to go towards when your stress is high. If you notice that those cravings go up and you start moving in that direction, that's a sign, uh uh-oh, like I'm not dealing with something. So, And that's an easier, more objective thing to pay attention to. And then what I do when I notice that is I then say, wait a minute, how did my body feel? What's going on? And it gives me a better gauge of, of what's going on. The other thing is uh, your strength in the gym. I mean, if, you're, if your strength is going down, you're definitely going in the wrong direction. If your strength is the same or going up and you feel good in the gym, that's an easy gauge. So if you have like a bunch of workouts in a row that suck, you're, 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 you might be overdoing it. Something's going on. You need to back off a little bit. If your workouts feel great, you feel strong, your performance is good, that's typically pretty objective objectively showing you that you're doing the right things. So you mentioned a few symptoms. Like, have you noticed any gastrointestinal stuff? Like, have you noticed like when your gut's off or when you eat certain foods, like how it affects you, all that kind of stuff? So I've always been kind of like numb, I guess you could say to that. Like people have always talked about being bloated and stuff like that. And they're like, Oh, such and such. And once I actually started doing therapy, I was like, Oh, this is, actually related to that like it's i was actually getting a lot of bloating but at the same time i was also Mm -hmm. in probably the bulk i'd say a bulk of my life i was shooting me shooting to get up to 235 and i managed to maintain that for about a month and a half and i'm like all right i'm tired of being miserably full and it's like i'm i'm done it's like i'm gonna go back back down to two two oh five you know, it was just a goal I had set at one time, but Sal, so you did mention like the gym has always been my outlet for stress. So let me back it, up. It, let me back up, Jake. Let, let me back up for a second. How far are you into the massage uh, career? Are you you're taking classes now? Yes, uh, we are like a month and a half in. So things kind of changed from when I first sent out the email. So um, okay. like right now, I'm currently working three days a week overnights part at a part time job. And then going to school during the days okay. to kind of make mortgage payments and stuff like that. I'm hoping for a schedule change with work to potentially allow me to get in a couple of days a week at the gym. Just something like like half hour mo- mobility work or something like that. All right. So here's why it's I asked you so that. Long. Here's why I asked you that because I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with uh, what the whole schooling looks like for massage. I used to have a, a studio with massage therapists in there. Um, and sometimes the, the person I had in there was very experienced. And she would bring people in who had to do their hours in order to get their certifications. Mm -hmm. So I know part of your training is massaging people, but also getting massaged. Every day. Okay. Every single day. Okay. Here's what I want. Every single day. And it's at least an hour each way. Okay. That's going to put you in your body. So if you don't know, if you don't know, if you're noticing, you're probably already noticing that you're Mm -hmm. able to feel things more because Mm -hmm. you'd be Okay. I would work with the massage therapists that are in the class with you that are massaging you. And I want you to tell them if they don't already, I'm sure they already do, but tell them, let me know if you start to feel like I'm overstressed 
or if I'm too tight or if I'm tighter than normal. And I want you okay. to take their, I want you to take what they say and, and, and use that because a good massage therapist will let you know, they'll work on you and be like, Ooh, you seem like there's something. And then, you know, we'll deny it. No, everything's fine, but they can feel, and you'll learn this mm -hmm. as, as you go along, you'll start to be able to feel as you work with regular clients, whether or not they're more stressed or less stressed. So I would ask them, you know, Hey, I'm going to start working out. I have trouble feeling, uh, you know, tough feelings. I tend to ignore things. I don't notice until it's too late. Let me know if you notice big changes in my body while you're working on me and then have them point it out to you. You've also well, probably that's one thing they pointed out already is that I am the toughest person in class to work on <laughs> one. I'm the one who work have the, it has the biggest workout history Yeah, and two, it's yeah, they're all, it's like, it's like trying to work on a rock. Yep. Because yeah. you're so bound up and tense everywhere. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, I've got a lot of work by the way, that's to work through there. I, I want to say something too, Jake. That's not because you lift weights. Yeah. People think that because someone lifts weights that they're going to be internalized a lot of tighter stress. and harder to work on with massage therapy. It's not because you lift weights. It's because you probably hold everything in. Yep. And so your totally body is with without even knowing your body's on guard. Okay. okay. So that's what's happening. It's not the weights. If you train, if you, it, you'll get the opportunity at some point, if you massage someone who's got big muscles, who's very healthy and knows how to not hold things in. Yeah. The muscles are bigger, but they're pliable. You can work through them. In fact, it'll be a great person to work on because you'll be able to identify muscles and know what you're doing. And it's really fun for you to work on someone like that. So you're tight, not because you lift, but because you hold everything in. So as they release those muscles, you may start to feel emotions. Let yourself feel those and and get and, and take their feedback. That'll help you through this process. So you're actually in a very good place right now to to answer your own question, which is how do I know when I'm doing too much? Okay. And then just keep in mind, I know if you've been listening to the show long enough, you've probably heard me say before, the goal is always to do the least amount possible to elicit the most amount of change. And so mm -hmm. if we're coming from not really doing anything, you doing something is moving in the right direction and you're all you're always far better off leaning into that direction than the overdoing it and setting yourself back there's nothing wrong with just training you know 15 minutes for one day a week for a little bit and then go into 30 minutes and then go into an hour and then eventually to two days like there's nothing wrong with slowly stacking it like that as you're also feeling better and then i'm glad sal pointed out the feeling that the massage therapists are feeling when they're when they're massaging because you may feel that way for a while until you work through all the emotional stuff that you have to get through. And that doesn't necessarily mean you can't train the body lifting weights. No, you should, in yeah. fact, doing it at the same time is the best thing. Right. Do. So it doesn't, so because you, you, you'll get that feeling. Some people will think that sometimes like massage therapy will be like, Oh my God, you're so tight. You're this. And they're like, damn, I can't lift. Cause I'm so, they're telling no. me. So, yeah. No, that's not necessarily true. You could definitely still lift weights. And what they're talking about is more about what the guys were referring to with holding it all in and, and being tight because of what you got going on mentally more than what's going on physically. Yeah, you gotta switch to evanescence, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta let it out, man. Yeah. yeah, it's hard. I don't know about that. From one metal <laughs> from one metal head to another. I'm you know. just saying, bro. Yeah. 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 Hope, um so so with that, like it that's why I'm hoping for a schedule change, because like on average right now between Monday and Monday at 7 a.m. when I get up for class to Thursday at 10 p.m. when I um, well, finish class and go to a second part-time job. It's about 16 hours of sleep almost I get between those three days. Wow. So like that's why I'm really hoping for a schedule change to hopefully increase that. Everybody's been saying I'm absolutely nothing. I, they don't know how I'm still functioning through class, but it's yeah. – I, I, I don't necessarily feel – odd that's the weird part like it's I'm, I'm a little bit tired but it's just like i it's got to get done so strap up the boot laces and yeah, keep yeah. going listen <laughs> human listen, body's pretty crazy the ability the the ability to disconnect and disassociate uh is a, an adaptive response and it serves you well for maybe what has happened in the past and that's what you're noticing right now so you can't really trust your feelings i know you say i feel all right mm -hmm. no i feel fine you don't know what you feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you're, yeah. so you're probably feeling or what's probably happening is you're overworked and you just don't, mm -hmm. you just can't acknowledge it because you haven't been able to. So I would not lift weights or train within the period of time. We're only getting 16 hours of sleep over a three or yeah. four day period. I would not train. No. So no, I would I'm try to sleep as much as possible. Good. That time good. <laughs> good. Do that. Yep. Do that. I hope, I hope we helped you out. Yeah. Circle back with us, Jake. I'd like to hear how you're doing in about uh, 60, 90 days. Yeah. Okay. Um, quick question when I'm like 
when I do finish, like I know I have some other issues um, with like a uh, hip injury before it's hip and shoulder injury. Um, would it be best to like start out with Prime or Prime Pro? Prime Pro. That also um, like or like symmetry. Like that's kind of where I'm like mixed up because I know there's imbalances as well. The combo of those. Yeah, Prime mm. Pro for the correctional exercise and then symmetry would be a great workout. Do you yeah. have those? No, I do not. I will send them to you. Okay. Yeah. You got it, man. Hang in right. there. Thanks a bunch. Yep. You got yep. it, brother. Yeah. Uh, it's like a 33-year-old Justin. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> totally relate to him. Justin's like, oh, yeah. Just yeah. Like, this, is making, this is making me it's feel making really me, awkward. I was like sweating the whole time. Like, oh. You know, it's like, so for people, I'll use an analogy. Like, imagine if, uh, imagine you're sitting and you're totally chill and relaxed and then a loud noise goes off and you, you automatically jump and tense up. That's your body's protective mechanism. Yeah. And if you're, if you're constantly stressed or you don't feel safe, even if you don't feel it because you don't allow yourself to feel it, mm -hmm. your muscles will be tighter. Yeah. Your body is tighter all the time. It's on so alert 24 seven. It. So someone comes and tries to work on massage therapists know this. They'll try and press on a muscle. Like, Oh my God, these are like, they're like rocks. That's because your body is on guard. It's yeah. not because your muscles are overdeveloped. I'm glad yeah. you had said that because totally. I knew that the th the thought that I think most people have after hearing that is like, oh, then maybe he shouldn't do any no. tra strength, strength the training. Strength training was helping that's him. Not the, yeah, it's not the issue. No, yeah. no. If yeah. anything, strength training helps tell the body to relax a little bit Yeah, it's so long it's not abused. Uh, but yeah, that tightness comes from your body's not feeling safe. It's funny because there, there's like a self-selection to like heavy, heavy music. You know, I, I would love to see like a study on that. Because <laughs> it, yeah, but up to find a lot but like like everybody i've met at these festivals and everything we have a very similar kind of of course background bro i mean that's your wave that is it's your outlet your yeah. outlet that's yeah. your what you've internalized all this hate anger it's, it's fear it's, all the uh, thing all the stuff yeah. you've bottled it up and then that's your one way of letting it out right and so it's a it's a it's a safe outlet for that personality so of course it's got a selection bias to people that love that music right our next caller is anita from australia anita how can we help you Hi, how's it going? Good, We're doing great. great. How are you? Awesome. I was good. And then as soon as the video connected, I just got very nervous, a little bit starstruck, but here I am. <laughs> we're, we're so um, handsome on video. So in person, way first, Sal glows, I want to start so. with a little bit of a thanks. Like, obviously, all of your, like, health and fitness content that you put out is just absolutely amazing. Um, but my favorite thing about your podcast is just all of the chats, the random facts, everything like that that you put out. I just find that, like... Now, when I'm having conversations with people, I'm just so much more interesting. I can just pull out from all of these different things, and it's just amazing. Thank so you. I all just right. want to say thank you for expanding my mind, I guess. It's awesome. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much. How can we help you? <laughs> cool. So I've got my question, and I'll read out. Um, since I submitted my question, there's been like a couple of little changes. So I'll read out my question, and then I'll update you from then. Um, so my question is uh, about fat loss, muscle retention, and semaglutide. I've heard you guys talk about the benefits of azempic and semaglutide for fat loss, and I'm giving it a go for a short amount of time. My question is, if I'm focusing on my protein and hitting between about 150 to 170 grams a day, how low can my calories go before it affects my muscle loss? Um, I usually maintain around... 2,200 to 2,400 calories a day. And I want to do the cut for about six to eight weeks on 1,800 calories. The seven glutide means that I'm just not hungry and I'm struggling to even hit that some days. I've got a powerlifting meet at the end of the year, so I want to maintain as much muscle as possible. Um, so since then, um, I did the cut for about four weeks and I lost about five kilos. But then I could just hear you guys saying to me, like, what is my main focus at the moment and what do I want to focus on? Um, and that would be my muscle and I want to maintain as much as possible. So I put a hold on that cut and I'm just going back to eating all the food, getting as strong as possible until I do that powerlifting meet. Um once that's done, I definitely do want to resume the cut and pretty much everything else still stands. Um, so, yeah, probably like the start of the year, I want to do that again, um, try the semaglutide, diet and just wanted your advice on what you reckon. Yeah. You I, you hit it. I think you're right on track to what you I would recommend to you yeah. is to train okay. and eat for the powerlifting meet, which, by the way, sets the table 
for keeping the, the most amount of muscle using the the semiglutide. Yeah, I would reverse reverse diet uh, throughout through and until the powerlifting meet. So try not to gain any weight. Slowly bump your calories. That way, the cut is just so much more effective. Yeah. How um, did you stop the semaglutide? Yes. So I only did it for about four weeks and I just got a bit worried because I just couldn't eat as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. And I just was worried that the longer I went on it, the less hungry I would be. And yeah, then I wouldn't yeah. even be able to hit those Smart. numbers. So yeah. yeah Smart. Now, now is, is there, okay. So why did you use it in the first place? Is it a real struggle for you to cut? So um, I've been on a bit of a weight loss journey for a while. So I lost, I'm going to talk in kilos. So sorry. That's okay. We can um, that about, 40 kilos wow. over um, the amount of time after having kids and everything like that. So, wow. yeah, like it just been in that diet phase for a while. But over the last, say, one and a half to two years, I've been bulking, maintaining, building muscle, doing all the things that you guys say, like build all the muscle first. And I think I've just been enjoying eating so much food. Like I love it and I don't <laughs> want to diet again. And I've just found that trying to diet, I'd start for a couple of weeks and then I'd just be like, nah not doing it. I want to do this. I want to stay strong, but I do still have fat to lose. Like I do want to still lose about 10 kilos. So yeah, it is my goal and I know that it will benefit me, but it's just so hard to get into it. And I found starting the semaglutide, it was easy to stick to that um, diet. Yeah. Anita, you, uh, you, you're not somebody I would recommend semaglutide to because you're in a good place. You've been building, okay. you already lost a lot on your own. Your metabolism is pretty damn good if you're maintaining at 22 to 2,400 yeah. calories. I would do a slow, when you're ready to cut, just do it slow. Unless you're in a hurry, I would do it slow because here's the issue. Uh, with it's just the mental barrier around it. Like I just find if I start to cut, then I'm just like, oh, I can't do it and I can't stick to it. And then I thought if I, with the semaglutide, it just do that quick, like four to six weeks, just that, yeah, like hit it hard. I'm not a few kilos and then maintain. And that's what I have been doing throughout the time to just build muscle, like doing that four to six week cut, then going back to maintenance for a while, sitting there and then just doing that small cut. And I found mentally it helps me. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not against yeah, it Yeah, over the last year, 12 months. I just I, haven't been able to stick to it. I'm not against, I'm not against, I'm not against it. I'm not against it at all. I, I wouldn't recommend it. Like it wouldn't be like that. Might that would not be just, I agree with Sal that if like we got this question and that, that wasn't even part of the equation and you asked us what to do, we'd always go the natural route of like where he was heading. But the fact that you bought it already and you have it. And I actually think that your mindset around it is healthy and fine. I'm not against it. I don't, I think it, and, and I think what the, what the research is starting to show with, the, the, what it's doing mentally for people that are being able to quit cigarettes and drinking and all kinds of other habits around it. A lot of people are seeing benefits in that direction. It's not ideal because what also the research is pointing to is people are losing as much muscle as they are losing as they're losing because fat. The calories are so because so, because the, the calories are so low. So the thing that I would be concerned about is that if you are starting to really struggle to even hit your protein intake and our calories are starting to drop, you know, 1,300, 1,200 calories because you're just not hungry, then I'd pull you off of it for sure. I'd say, okay, now now we're, we're just going to shoot ourselves in the foot. You're going to lose your yeah. 20 kilos, but half of it's going to be muscle, half of it's going to be fat, and we're not going to have gotten any leaner or better, would, better situation. Uh, have, have you, can, could you try cutting the dose of the semaglutide in half? Well, I only just started on the lowest on the lowest dose and did it. So, like, yeah, for about four weeks. So when I start again, I could probably start at a lower one. Yeah, I would start lower, and I would not do more than a, a three hundred calorie cut under maintenance, and keep it there. And yeah, that'll okay, that'll yeah. help. Yeah, and keep strength training, keep the protein high, and that'll that'll really th that's the best you could do to maintain the muscle that you have. That's the best chance you got. If your calories go. You know, if your maintenance is 22, 24, and you're going below 1,800, 1,700, 1,600, it's probably going to be too low to maintain some of the muscle and strength that you've built. So I, I, the cut that I would do would be about 300 below maintenance, and I wouldn't do any more than that. And I would let myself do a nice, slow cut um, through that process. That's how I would use it. And in the semaglutide, you could try definitely a much lower dose to see if it does help with just a small cut. Because it sounds like it was really effective yeah. at even the lowest dose for you. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, it sounds like you have a. You, it sounds like you have good awareness around this too. So just keep an eye on it. I mean, I think that you've already got it. You've done. You have the right mindset with getting ready for the powerlifting meet. If you go back to using it again, just beware of if you if you're losing weight fast. That's probably not a good thing. We don't want to drop weight fast, like because if you are losing it really yeah. fast, more than likely we're losing as much muscle as we're losing fat. So just be aware of that and then kick it if that's the case. Yeah, well, in that four weeks, it was about five kilos, and then I was like, "Oh, it's a bit fast." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it's I mean, it's a little fast, but not crazy bad. Not crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's what is that? That's uh, two a week, twenty something pounds. Yeah. So, uh, no, sorry, no, about twelve pounds, thirteen pounds. Yeah. So, uh, it's a little fast. Uh, do you know what your calories were when you were when you were doing that? Um, about eighteen hundred was really? my goal, but yeah. then some days were even under that. Okay, so what do you think you averaged if you were to add it up and average it out? Fifteen hundred. Uh, I suppose it wasn't too much under, so I'd probably say about like seventeen. Um, wow, that's not bad. That's not bad but yeah, bro. most of the days my protein was still high. But and her protein, Anita, just- you're doing fine. Anita, your metabolism is doing great. You've done a great job with building strength and muscle because that's not a huge cut to get that fast of a weight loss. Yeah. That's pretty good. I, I just make it a smaller cut. That's all. But your metabolism is working really well, uh, in, you know, in terms of fat loss. I mean, do you, do you have access to like a DEXA scan or body, like a body fat test that you can check up on yourself every th- three to four weeks? Yeah, I did do a scan at the start, but I haven't done one to check back on it again. I'd love to see um, that. Because yeah. I went off it pretty quickly and then went on holidays and I was like, oh, do another one. I was the well, the goal was to check on it. Um, definitely do yeah. after the powerlifting meet. Definitely do one right. So yeah. at, right after the powerlifting meet, set up or right before set up a, a time to go do it. Get that number, and then as you go into the uh, using the semiglutide and the cut, just check on it every three to four weeks. And uh, yeah. I mean, I tell you what, we'll put. Are you in our? Are you in our private forum? Yeah, I'd love to follow up with you. Yeah, you would too. I want to hear the results. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to put you in our private forum. So Doug will give you access to that, and I would love post updates. Yes, I would love to hear the update on one. I'd like to hear how your meat goes, and then two, I'd like to Amazing. see. Yeah, I'd like to see where your your body fat is going into the meat, and then we'll check up on you three weeks yeah. after and see how that's working for is you. Is this your first powerlifting meet, or have you done one before? It is, yeah, first one. Wow, oh, that's right. good. For, it's like yeah. that's the perfect program for based off of what you just told us. Mm-hmm. Do you have a, Do you have Maps Powerlift? Uh, no, I don't. I've been working with a powerlifting coach okay. actually. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Okay, you're all, yeah. That's even better. Yeah, yeah they're going to individualize the program, so that's even better. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. Good for you. How are your lifts? Um. Good. I've only just recently got into powerlifting and training. So I think, what is it? At the moment, my squat is 100 kilos. Um, my bench has that's not good. been moving lately, which is very frustrating, but that's around 50 kilos. And my deadlift is around 120. That's yeah. good. Sorry if you have those to are good numbers. Great. Yeah, that that's good. N- those are, no, those are great, great numbers. Start. Listen, yeah. if you fall in love with powerlifting and you're like, eh, I don't want to cut, I like being strong. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Yeah. There's literally, I swear, listen, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. If you love being strong, yeah. you love yeah. powerlifting. Powerlifting can get unhealthy in some ways too because people can hurt their you joints and stuff. With it, but but yeah. it's yeah. because it's strength focused and where you came from, where you lost like something like 90 pounds or something like that before, yeah. I love it for you. Yeah, so sure. if you decide you don't want to cut, you don't have to. Yeah, I love powerlifting. I yeah. love it. Awesome. Just getting strong and just yeah. feeling strong. And it's good to just have that focus now, like not you know, going through my whole life of just having that focus of being on a diet all the time. Oh, yeah. to have that strength. Yes. Anita, this is great. Perfect. Yeah. You're doing great. Yeah. You're doing good. Keep us posted. Um, Please keep us posted. About like the joint health and stuff. I just had a question. Yeah. Um, if that's all right, like what to do afterwards. Like I'm feeling, you know, everything's kind of, my body needs a little bit of a break. Where mm. would you recommend to go afterwards? Like performance. I was thinking. Symmetry. Perform- I hear you guys recommend symmetry yeah. and stuff all the time just for like unilateral, but I do do a bit of unilateral stuff in my, um, in my like program and stuff like at the moment. But doing a whole thing of it. No, no, I like, I like symmetry because, and, and you might be doing some unilateral stuff, but you don't, you're not doing unilateral only training. Yeah, but I like, I like, yeah, I like the mobility and rotational work she's going to get from, from performance. Uh, do powerlifting from now till the end of the year. Yeah. And then go, yep. then go into rotational I mean, they're, they're and mobility fi- stuff. They're both yeah. fine. If performance, I'd maybe skip phase one. And yeah. Phase right one's too powerlifting like, yeah. Uh, okay. So here's your two options. You could do maps performance, start in phase two. Or you could just do map symmetry. Both of them will be great. Yep. We'll send you both okay. if you don't have either one. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, you got it. 
kick ass. Keep yeah. Please keep us posted. I definitely will. Thank you. All right, awesome. It was so great to talk to you guys. Have a good day. Thank you, you, too. too. What a nice story. Yeah, she great lost days. a lot of weight on her own. Yeah, has been trying to build muscle. Did a power. Did power. Like like what everybody a great pay mindset attention. Shift. Everybody pay attention. Okay, because the weight loss that she had experienced, ninety five plus percent of people would gain back. The way that she's doing it, her odds of success are significantly better. Super high. Yep. Significantly better. She's doing it the right way, and I bet you in a year or two, not only would she keep the weight off, she's probably gonna be leaner and stronger. And it, on her journey towards developing this really nice relationship. Yeah, what a fun story. I do want to, to address, though, the semi-glutide. We all agree, I don't think we would ever, that would never be the go-to, right? Mm -hmm. Especially with her. She's doing such a good job. Yeah. It wouldn't the, even been brought up in conversation. It otherwise. wouldn't. It yeah. wouldn't. The fact that she has it, the fact that she, I think she has a good, healthy mindset, the fact that she had the awareness to stop it because she already thought she was losing That's weight true. too fast. It shows me that she's a, a healthy sure. enough. Like, who am I to judge her for you trying peptides when here we are trying all kinds of fucking <laughs> peptides, right? right? When it's like, listen, if you if you have the right Don't mindset, me <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why I said it though, right? Because yeah. it's, I mean, it, she has the right mentality. And the, the fact that without even being coached by us, she knew to get off of it just because she thought it was too yeah. fast. She's in a healthy calorie place already. Her mm -hmm. concern was she knows she's already cutting so many calories. I don't want to lose muscle. Super smart. I mean, I, that's a person that I would totally, if they have the disposable income, to be able to, to try out a peptide like that, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against it. Sure. And, you know, yeah. for people watching, uh, like you want to go through a doctor, we work with, a com we work with people who are doctors, mphormones.com. Look, if you love the show, Head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. They're awesome. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. I'm at Mind Pump to Stefano and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. You know, you, you got to manifest it starts at the feet, dude. I feel like you could like. I feel like you, They're tight though. I, I, they look, they they look, look like socks. Yeah, I bought, I bought other ones that are bigger because I was like, I fucked Who, up. What are those? They're Do, Nikes. They're, um, are those are Nikes? Yeah, they're, 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 don't they run a half a size small slash Nikes? training shoes? <laughs> wait, wait, what are they wait, called? Wait. Um, I forget what they're called. Hold on a second. The box said racing, so you bought it. It says racing. <laughs> <laughs> it did, dude. It did. And I was like, I want to be fast. It's like again. me. I'll buy a shoe if it says cool. I'll be like, I don't think I don't like these. I'll buy these. <laughs> Bro, I need something with a little bit of heel lift because I've been wearing flats like for decades. So I need. I need a little bit of that oh, to, really? to get me kind of forward. Oh. That was my thought process. Oh, anyway. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> so you guys start wearing heels. So I'm going to be healing out. <laughs> He's breaking a suit for us. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to come in with like, yeah, it's like a little out of time. Next next levels, dude. Hey, the next bro. one's going to be yeah. up here. Yeah, so at what, hey, what point do you want me to step in and say something yeah. here, guys? <laughs> hey, hey. So we don't question him. <laughs> get some remember I told you guys, remember? Yeah. I'm all... Get some go go boots. It's, hey, it's I got like the. It's for performance. You know, it's for performance. Come on, you guys. Gotta stay on my toes.